let's see. I haven't practiced and, English in a long time, but let's see how I haven't goes. I haven't practiced Sami in a long time. Like my my, my <laughs> Sami my, my Sami sucks. You know, it is when was the last time that I um that I that I practiced Sami? Uh yeah, I don't know. Ritu Ritu was 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 the deep dive for me. Um, oh yeah, that's years ago. That was years ago. That, that's 2014. So that's seven years ago already. Oh. And and then yeah, and the only time that I got to practice Sami it was yeah, what was it? Uh, probably pro form, like uh, talking to you guys, either of you, or yeah, trying to these these these. these what I don't know who taught me that, but it's this weird. I don't know if it's a pickup line. Is it uh, maybe it's a Sami pickup line? I don't know, but but um, it can, if I can remember it right, is um, you are so beautiful. I want to throw a knife over your head. Hmm. Is, is, is that is that something that I don't know? Somebody taught somebody taught, told me to say that at the Riddle Riddle. Like, all right, did that person? I can't remember who it was. I'm pretty sure it's Swamas Asa Kuso that, that said it to me. Um, did, did, he, did he just um, give me a, a legitimate way of engaging with Sami women or as, as, as a, as a, as a com conversation starter? Or did, he just, um, uh, did I just embarrass myself every time when, when I said that? No, yeah, it's definitely a pickup line. <laughs> oh, I never heard <laughs> I, I never heard that one, but uh, yeah, I think oh. it's kind of a beautiful way of starting a conversation if you are actually picking up on her or him. Did not yeah, work yeah. at all. Did not work. No, um, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's, I think it's, I think it's the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there is one, one extra layer to this because, uh, <clears throat> you know, we have in the Sami mythology, we have this um, thing called Kufihtara or Ganesha there. They're really beautiful creatures who live underground and uh, sometimes they show up uh, uh, on top of the ground and uh, there is this uh, belief that if uh, you see um, a reindeer herd of, of a kufihtar and you throw something made of iron over, over the reindeer, then you will get all of them to you. So I think that is an application or way of applying this method to Kufihtar uh, women who are not actually human, but uh, you can uh, give a <laughs> compliment to some woman that you are well, as beautiful as a Kufihtar. In all honesty, like, want... yeah. <laughs> Sami women are out of this world. Um, but it's, it's, it's been um, <laughs> uh, um, attested by a lot, of, a lot of indigenous men. I think also a lot of non-indigenous men. Um, but so basically, what you're saying is that um, the execution was what was also so it's all de dependent on if she kn knew like the context of it, like the, the mythological uh, context of it. Um, oh, yeah, 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 and also what kind of knife you were throwing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't, I don't know, know about that. I don't like, I just. So he said that. Let's assume it was Thomas Asa Kusa. It could be, it's, it could be someone else as well. Um, yeah, it sounds like people. him. Sounds like him. All right, let, let's go yeah, with that. Yeah. Um, that uh, he told me to, to 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 just say that and not no, not give me any context. Like what kind of knife? Um, just walk up to someone, <laughs> like open up a lava, zits, Buddhist, and then and then and then um, and then and then yeah, say something like that. Um, did not work at all. As in, had good conversation though. I had very good conversation at uh, Redo Redo, um, where I just yeah, I came for the connection, obviously. Um, oh, yeah, yeah uh, but it was, it was it was fun and. The, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, you have you have a quite uh, long uh, history with uh, with the Sami, and you have visited uh, Sapmi a number of times, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, do, do, do. I think at one point I was, um, I think like mostly at, on the Norwegian side though, on the Norwegian side of, of Submi, um, for, for the, in all in preparation for the World Conference. So that is, that's 20, 2012, 2012, 2014, um, Alta, Karashok, uh, um, well, yeah, uh, started off in uh, Tromso, um, 
and by, the, by all means, um, correct me if my pronunciation sucks and all that. Like, um, it's been it's been a while. <laughs> um, Alta Karashok. Um, I think at some point I was in Kotokano uh, for um, for a brief moment. Almost went to Yokmok mm -hmm. for the market. Yeah, yeah. The 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 because I, I was. Riddle Riddle was so uh, amazing to me. It's like, oh man, I want to do many more of the, the, these Sami um, uh, events, uh, and and not knowing that Yakmak was in heart of winter, and uh, so I was like, ah, yeah. So luckily, I had I had a scheduling conflict, so I, otherwise I had to like move from because I knew like before Yakmak I had I had a meeting in in Australia, so I had to go directly. So I had to pack. Winter clothes, um, going to Australia so that I could go travel to uh, Yokmo right after. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's my favorite uh, winter event in in Sapmi, this Yokmo market, and I I really missed it this year. Mm. Yeah, it was supposed it was, it to be this last weekend. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, we just passed the time when it usually is, and it was actually last year. It was. Um, the last proper Sami party that we had before the lockdown hit. Yeah, so that's yeah. the last real party, Sami party, where I've been to. So I have some really, really nice memories from that. Yeah, like it's it is all right. So so for the non-indigenous people that are listening and watching, because um, I'm, I'm talking about Sami people and 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 the Sami events and and parties and, and markets. This is, um, yeah, like. I don't think that you can compare it to any 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 festival in the entire world um, because it is and by all means like my reference my uh, parameters is is Riddu Riddu obviously um, but been there for a couple of days and by the way the sun does go down so that's that that messes with you as well um, yeah. Uh, going to a concert at 1 a.m. in the morning or 2 a.m. in the morning, and you just have a feeling that it's like just like I don't know, um, 12 p.m. or like 1 p.m. Um, but it is like people um, uh, uh, going in, in their gakti, and and you have uh, so gakti is like the the the, 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 the sami clothing, right? Uh, attire, sorry. Uh, and it, it's one of the, I think for an indigenous person, a a festival and or an event that really feels like home but um, in terms of um it is an expression of culture and people are, are yeah really enjoying um everything being like community uh the food is amazing and yeah, people bring in their lavus so they're their own, own their own tents and, and uh and just just hang around and that, that's something that i did not um expect actually uh because that was my because Rita was was my first um indigenous slash sami uh festival that you just like go up to a lava and i just zoop, open up open it up and like and say Buddhist, and then just sit down talk a little bit and yeah if you don't want to go somewhere else you, you just just you leave and and so many good conversations it's like you have all these lavas all these tents so imagine going into like small podcasts you know like, like you, you have just these conversations all around this this field and the, somebody some people are talking about relationships you know then the other people are talking about pot uh, not podcasts, about politics you know so it's super interesting and for the first time ever that i felt that i did not have to go through a confrontation in terms of yeah. like um i'm indigenous and so you had to go through the whole thing, right? Um, uh, and, and I'm fine with that, obviously, like explaining where you're from and who indigenous peoples are, but always when you, and, and I don't know, like, uh, and talk, yeah, uh, and if you have the same issue at other uh, um, festivals or events, yeah, um, yeah just feel free to jump in. Um, but usually I have this, this feeling, all right, um, you ask me where I'm from, what what I do. I always give them bits and pieces of information. Um, so like I give them a little bit. If they're interested still, I give them a little bit more. Um, but because I always feel that I have to go into some confrontation. Riddu riddu, um, or uh, what does Sami not 
and then zero zip zilch, no confrontations whatsoever. And that felt so good, really good. Um, I remember that in, in 2014, um, the, these amazing DJs, a uh, track called Red, um, they, they, they performed. And they, they, they were doing some, some kind of an interview and they said pretty much the same thing. Like, like um, they, they, they go all over the world and, and they, they try to show the culture, express their, their identity and only at Ridu Ridu or and, and with, amongst the Sami they do that feel, it was the first time at least that year that they felt they did not have to go through some confrontation. So I think that is a yeah. testament to, um, is it a testament to the Ridu Ridu or is it a testament to the Sami? Both. I Both. Think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I agree totally. And I think these, these uh, our festivals, the Sami festivals, there are not so many, but they are really important for, for because we don't have the many gathering points at all in our daily lives. So we don't have the platforms that uh, many other other societies have like both media wise wise and and every, every kind of gathering points <laughs> most times mm. we don't even have a cafe that is common for, for like a sami cafe or sami house or gathering points so those points they are really important like you said for for developing politics strategies and just to hang out and and relax with with your own people so so i i i treasure them very much the is that me festivals? Yeah, me too. I've uh, I've been going to a lot of Sami festivals to an extent that I have earned myself a title of a festival guru. Which, uh, <laughs> I am proud of. I'm very proud of that. All right. Um, yeah. who, who, all right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let back up a little bit. Who gave you that title, and how? What did you do to earn that title? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, who gave the title? That's uh, that's easier to explain than the second part of the question. But uh, um, it was in in um, in Star where we it's in a, a South Sami area, and we were sh celebrating a um, hundred year uh, since the first Sami international gathering <clears throat> that was in uh, yeah 2017. This um, this celebration and. And there we, uh, if I'm not mistaken with the event that was next year, because we celebrated 100 years, two years in a row. <laughs> anyway, there was this uh, uh, event with the Sami festivals. So it was a panel discussion. Uh, I believe there were five uh, uh, heads of different Sami festivals in this panel. And I was the, the moderator for the discussion and and I was uh, considered appropriate to do that because I, I like to go to a lot of festivals. And then the organizers thought that uh, they'll have to come up with a, a nicer name than a moderator. It sounds so boring. So so that's when when this uh, title of a festival guru came came out to be. And yeah, I guess it's because I just go to every every event that there is. <laughs> But yeah, not, no. yeah, definitely. These are these are really important uh, uh, events. Uh, like um, some friends, I only meet them once a year in in these festivals. So mm. it's uh, it's really they play a key key role also on on this kind of a personal connection. But of course, they hold a big uh, like um, communal or societal role also because yeah. they. They they play a role in raising um, uh, important issues. Uh, uh, of course, arts, music is often very central, but uh, also other forms of art. And often uh, there is also some uh, uh, discussions, uh, panel discussions, presentations. So so they're definitely arenas to to discuss many kinds of issues. So yeah, I, I value uh, Sami festivals very highly, and. Uh, a tribe called Red is coming to zap me this summer also. Um, they, we, we like them. They were also in Iahisitja, which is a Sami festival on the Finnish side. So this will be at least the third time that they are in zap me. Um, if things uh, go smoothly. Yeah, we haven't had festivals in a while now, but let's hope that the next summer we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and also I, I, the, yeah. the la last year's or because 
we also have this podcast and that's the basis for why we joined in you today uh, mm. and also these festivals it makes it very easy to find interesting guests to our our show because it's it's not that easy to to just sit here in in our valley we are neighbors on both sides of the on two sides of the national border but yeah. it's not that easy to 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 find guests in our immediate immediate neighborhood so those have been very very uh, uh, good the festivals to to do that yeah so we no, find no. find out all the nice people there and a fun fact that uh, we have uh, we have recorded uh, two episodes of uh, Super Zap Me, our podcast in Riddu Riddu, and in both of them we had as a guest a Sami psychologist. <laughs> yeah, oh. it was not it was not planned, but it just happened in in that way. No, yeah. but that's, that's interesting, right? Of, of um, at least that's in my experience from podcasting is um, that you just at least. I just interview and talk to people that I think I'm super interested. Um, I think are super interested, or topics that I'm interested in. So psychology. Um, in a while, I'll have a uh, um, what's it, astronomer uh, on on a podcast because I'm, I'm I'm interested in it because uh, I'm interested in science fiction too. Um, so I just want to know if um, ET is real or not. Um, and yeah, so so it, it's 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 fun like uh, to uh, to have. It's an excuse. It gives you permission, you know, to to approach people and have yeah. uh, conversations. All right, let's back it up a little bit. Super Sami, that's that's a podcast. Who came up with the name Super Sami, and what does Super Sami mean? Yeah, it wasn't. I should say it was a hard debate on what the name should be, but it wasn't. I just decided it one evening <laughs> when I, when I was when I was registering the domain for the for the website. And then it was like, okay, what should they call it? And just the day before, we had some criticism in the media about uh, our our ways of doing politics. It's like this. What? Uh, like uh, like a nickname or a, a little bit like a, a teasing name, or I'm not sure mm. how to say it in English. Yeah, that those those guys, they are the super Sami because we think we are better than all others. That we are like these extreme politicians, and uh, and I decided on the moment I was to punch that uh, website name in that uh, that yeah, I, you, you I'll, I'll take it. that as an uh, I'll take that as an that as an honor badge, and we called mm. just called it podcast and super Sami. So that's yeah, the yeah. history behind that. It's not a very deep <laughs> thought behind, <laughs> but it suited well then. It's easy to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, definitely it's super Sami. I was I was expecting to see like cover art of the Sami with the two of you with, with Superman capes and all and and but then again your Gakti is already your Superman cape so and your your <laughs> Superman suit so um, point taken. Uh, so yeah, super Sami and so so what what do you guys do on, on a podcast? It is um, I I have an idea that it's like. Yeah, conversations, but but yeah, um, explain to people that are, and it's in Sami, right? In Sami language. Yeah, mostly when we have uh, when we have Sami guests, then it's. Uh, but we have two episodes in English also. You should check them out. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, those yeah. those you can those you can understand. But uh, well, the concept was uh, Asla described it a few episodes ago very nicely. That he put it this way: that uh, we had all these interesting discussions privately uh, mm. among among the meeting tables and along the fires fi- campfires and so on that and, and and we thought that these discussions they really should more people should be part of them so so that one way to to make people at least hear those discussions it's it would be to make a post podcast for example yeah uh, and uh, another another issue is that um, you don't get when you are in politics wherever you are in politics you only get the headlines and it's a very narrow narrow room to come come across with opinions and and to exchange ideas because it's so narrow if you get a good headline then you maybe get people interested in reading the rest of the article which is also very narrow you have yeah. to make only two or three bullet points and that's it but with the podcast we can decide ourselves how deep we dig into issues 
Um, yeah. Our concept, we, we talk about things until we, we are empty, so to say, or we get yeah, tired. Yeah. Yeah, and one one thing that I, I I fully agree with you on a on a podcast thing because it allows you to present context um, on your own terms uh, because um, with media like if you want to be on, on a, in a newspaper article on a TV show or, or on an, on the news you get your know, 15 seconds of quote unquote fame and and the only thing that they'll show is a soundbite well they the only Show what 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 uh, what triggers people's emotions, you know. So like uh, um, Super Sonic, for example, they they want they used it to to trigger people's emotions. What what you did, you just owned it, and that, that's a super good thing. Uh, but your the problem is is that for indigenous peoples, uh, and that's why I keep telling indigenous peoples go start a podcast, do, do do a podcast, record your own conversations, because you can do it on your own terms. And you're no longer at the mercy, you're at the mercy of, of media, of of, uh, of of CNN. Like if you want to get on CNN and all these, all all these uh, TV and radio stations. So that's um, that is super important, right? especially when it comes to our situations um, in these people's situations. Um, the context of why we do what we do, uh, you know, what why we do, why we um, have certain actions and and. Um, by actions, I mean, yeah, you know, like a protest and, and stuff. Like, there's that's super important. And then doing a podcast is easy. Like, people can consume it. Like, while 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 they're, I don't know, ra- yeah. um, herding reindeer, uh, or when they're commuting and 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 stuff. And I was first one when we, uh, uh, what, the, Asla was the first one that got in, and like his his equipment looked really legit. Um, like looked like he's about to do some ASMR. Uh, so, do you do ASMR, by the way? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that? You should do it. You don't know those those. Uh, yeah, you, you do it. I was like, you 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 the equipment for that. When you speak close to a mic. Uh, okay. Very soft voice, and you try to trigger different kinds of emotions in people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should do that more. <laughs> Yeah, and then next time we next up. time we record, I'll I'll turn your gain way down, so you have to talk like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so that's that's cool, man. Uh, so um, super super zombie podcast, and so I, with a, yeah, what are we what are we going to talk about? Because for for well, people that are watching, listening, we don't have an agenda. We just talk until we yeah stop talking. Yeah, um, like we exchange the uh, one or two messages before this. Yeah. And <laughs> like, so what are we gonna talk about? And then we realized that we have the exact uh, same concept in our podcast. So yeah, it, it, the guest uh, or guests pretty much define the topic. So whatever yeah. they are doing, what they want to talk about, what they consider important, and that's and where the discussion goes. So yeah, that, uh, all, all yeah, but good. we have we have this couple of ground rules. Or, oh. or concepts, and okay. and it's uh, the po- podcast is is uh, supposed to be a part of decolonizing uh, our ways of life and our, our society. That's w- mm-hmm. that's one goal with the with the podcast, and to decolonize ourselves, uh, and also also to to uh, 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 be a platform for for uh, awareness or discussion about what is self determination, what does that mean, and how do we achieve that. So those yeah. those are like two two ground topics that we try to at least touch upon in in every episode. Yeah. So it's like the what did how how uh, Aslat has taught me to say this jumping off point, not jumping point. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I I very much agree because pretty similar. Um, I um I do my podcast to document the journey, and um because I'm on a I'm on a personal mission, uh, which is to um, inspire and empower 476 million indigenous peoples so that they can do what inspires them. Um, so, and it's not to prescribe things, but just show what I do and, and, and document my, my pitfalls, aha moments, my failures, um, so that they can learn from them and, or 
yeah, um, be inspired by them. And so I document the work that I do within the United Nations, international law and indigenous rights and everything else, um, but also do these long form conversations um, because uh, I, yeah, right now, so like, all right, let, let's get, let's dive, let, let's start uh, with a jumping point uh, that you guys are, uh, are talking about, like in terms of self-determination. Yeah, before oh, yeah. we Go jump ahead. there, oh, all right, I, yeah. I just want to say, I just want to say when you, when you started the podcast, the, the, yeah. the, at least in the starting episodes, I haven't mm -hmm. been able to catch up with all. Then okay. it was really, really good and educational. So you, thank you, Ghazali, for, for making oh. those in, in, the, in, the, in the international work, how both you have provided both history and lessons and, and tips and tricks for, for uh, new, newcomers like myself in, in, that, uh, in that field. So, so thank you, Ghazali. It's, it's, it's oh, been well. really, really, thank you. really good, great content. That makes, uh, so what well, were you going to yeah. say? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just, <laughs> um, I just um, you know, what was I, what, what was I going to say? First episodes, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. jumping off points. The jump, yeah, jumping off points. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I was super scared actually of starting a podcast. Uh, I'm doing anything. Um, because I was um, very insecure. I still am. I still am insecure when it comes to like in front of a camera and, and everything else. So I thought, you know what? I have a I have a face for radio, so I'll just do a podcast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, 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 that's what I thought. Um, so uh, for the first episodes, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just recorded. Oh, yeah. no, you can't be that harsh. Well, <laughs> hey, I was very harsh to myself in, in, in the beginning. Um, obviously, it has uh, 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 like become more chronic. I could, I could live with it. Um, um, so so the, that's the first hurdle that, that, that I had to overcome. Because I really wanted, here's what I saw. I saw the Indigenous people's in the movement, and Asla, you can correct me or uh, or add on if you ask you as well uh, um, at any point. Um, I saw that the movement was um, doing a lot of freestyle. They're just doing things the way that they were doing things. And it has got us to a, to a certain point um, that, uh, that it, got, it got us to, to, this, to us this point. But you also see that we need to be uh, yeah, do learn, be able to learn from each other. Um, we also learn a lot from the Sami, like Sami are like, Sami are like rock stars when it comes to in, in international politics in in this rights. Um, like it, it is, it definitely is. Um, so yeah, like, like I'm not a Sami. I'm never going to be a Sami. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Sami boy. That's what I am. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get to that point in in a bit, Asla. So we have to wait for the park that for for the um, okay. <laughs> somewhere halfway to <laughs> halfway to podcast. Um, so, but I knew that um, there are, there are people, young people, or people that are starting in the movement, starting to talk, think about indigenous rights, that that are yeah that, that have these questions, that have these like, how does this work? How does that work? And while I'm young. "Quote unquote," I was like, you know what? I'll just just record it. You just so grab my phone, and just just started recording it. So my, my very first episode was the airplane project, which was something that yeah. it, it was crazy. I just uh, I had a delay. I was about to go to Geneva. Uh, I live in Amsterdam, so I had a one and a half hour flight. Flight was delayed. Did not have anything to do. Um, obviously, my iPad ran out of battery, so I couldn't watch any Netflix. Um, so I just started talking to my phone. I recorded it, and it was like almost hour and a half, two hour long, and it was like a like a manifesto. Like, all right, this is why I'm doing this. Um, so I started. I was being very honest about the work, my truths, and so I think that was like what kicked off the the the, the podcast. As in, gave gave me it it get. Here, and here's a, for people that want to start a podcast or, or do anything to document their journey for Indian's rights. Vulnerability is something that you have to be able to be comfortable to, to be vulnerable. Because um, otherwise, other people won't learn. 
you want other people to learn from 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 uh, your mistakes, from your aha moments, uh, or at least take it, take that into account. Um, that that can also happen. Um, I could I could obviously start with all right. Here's how you write a statement at the United Nations. Here's how you do this. How you do do that. But it all starts starts and ends, I think, with mindset, like how you think about things. Self-determination is a mindset. You have to think that way. Um, you have to be able or putting yourself in a position of, that you always not question things, but always think about, all right, um, how does this manifest the, the Sami people's right to self-determination? How does this manifest the Maori people's right to self-determination? Like wherever you come from. Um, so, and so for people to, 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 if you want people to listen to you, I think you have to be authentic. So I just gave them everything that I had and, and still do try to do in the podcast, particularly in episode one and two and three and, and so forth. Um, so that they can make their own informed decision. Uh, you know, so like it is, it's not the, the silver bullet. Um, that's definitely not, not what it is, but it is what I know. And you can use it as, as, as a tool in your toolkit. Uh, you know, like, all right, I, I just, I'll, I'll get, get a little bit from Ghazali, a little bit from Bieska, I'll, 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 I'll get a little bit from Thomas Asakuso, I'm get a little from Aslat, you know, like, so you come up, you determine for yourself where you get your information from. But in order to do that, people need to put out information. People need to put yeah. out their, um, their, 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 their conversations. Yeah. And, um, it is right now, like you, you do not learn from sound bites. You do not learn from uh, one page position papers. A lot of people learn from the, the, the nuances, the context. So in this whole conversation or any, like a, if you sit by fireside, have a chat, you know, there's all these, these, all these, t these, these nuggets, these tiny pieces of information that are super important for, for other people uh, or that's, you can only get from these long form conversations because you get the nuance and nuance is something that's super important that you do not get at the, um, a lot lately. So that's a little bit yeah. like my starting point for, for, uh, for the, for the podcast. Hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> now half an hour into the show, should we go to the introductions? <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a good idea. Um, Welcome yeah. to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, every, hey, everyone. Um, you listen to a, to a, a podcast that's actually going to be recorded. Um, it's going to be going live on the Go Maluku podcast, which is mine, Ghazali Horella. And uh, we're only also going to post it on the, the podcast of these amazing gentlemen, uh, which they'll introduce. I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, the Super Sami podcast. If you have not subscribed yet, all right, minimize this 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 screen uh, or your iPhone or Android phone, whatever you're doing. Go to Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever wherever you're, you're consuming your your, your, um, your podcast, and follow them, subscribe, and leave a review. Um, I think that would, would make me very very happy if you uh, would do that at this point, and then continue listening. Obviously, because it's going to be an epic conversation. Right. Um, and also yeah. on Facebook, we have this Facebook oh, page. Yeah, Facebook page. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, and this almost sounds like it's the end of <laughs> the end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it's not. It is not. Uh, we just want to get this out of this this uh, out of the way so that um, we don't have to advertise like like it's like doing commercial thing. So like see it as a commercial block in the beginning, so that you and that you don't forget. <laughs> So that you don't forget um, to subscribe, like uh, Facebook page. Um, I'll, I'll in, on YouTube. I'll, I'll throw it in, in the show notes and podcast as well, uh, so that you can directly link to it. Um, all right, yeah, guys. No, so, uh, yeah. And, and right away, don't be intimidated when you find that podcast. Mostly, it's in both written and and uh, the episodes are recorded in Sami, but there are a couple of episodes. That are recorded also in English, so, so yeah, that, that so, could be so people are aware of. It. The yeah. first one was in Washington in a backyard in Alavo, and the second one was uh, with uh, Denali, uh, with her collaboration with her podcast mm. on the land in is it Alaska? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if if you're uh, if you if you do not know Sami uh, Sami language, that's okay. Um, after this uh, episode, um, Bieska and and uh, Azad are going to translate everything into Sami. This whole episode, and they'll, they'll post it on. Not kidding. Um, I see them laughing with with um, like yeah, right. Not gonna do it. Um, not happening. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be super interesting though. Um, if not, uh, if you you're not very fluent in Sami, that's okay. But just to show support, right? Um, from time to time, they'll. Um, this episode is in English, so um, uh, so you can definitely listen to this episode on their podcast. Uh, but um, yeah, it's about like showing support and and share it with your friends. Um, that would be much much appreciated. Uh, make me very happy. And um, yeah, introductions. All right, you guys. No, no, no. My- we're we're still on you. We're still on you. So- <sighs> All right. This is a, this is a collaboration between our mm, two right. podcasts, and uh, uh, y- you should introduce yourself. Like, who who are you? Why are you a Sammy boy? Should <laughs> you, you want to start? Uh, you want to start with that? <laughs> <laughs> it was already mentioned as a teaser, so we we, we should have explained Very it in true. some form. But at least yeah. you have you have long uh, uh, long uh, connections to Sammy and Sapmi, as we have. Uh, already touched upon and um yeah it was a while back when when you have received this uh, <clears throat> this uh, nickname sammy boy i don't remember the, the, the title <laughs> situation <laughs> but perhaps you do so oh and i remember can... the ritual very vividly like um so I'll, i'll i'll never forget that um so all right a little bit of context uh so um people that do not know me uh gazali Horella, i'm from maluku if you don't know where it is, I do not blame you. Uh, 999 islands between the Philippines and Australia. Um, two million indigenous peoples living on the islands. Uh, I'm one of them. Um, belonging to the Pacific uh, region. Um, so our language, for example, is um, our, and peoples. Well, peoples are very related to to, to um, the first pe- nations, first peoples in of Australia, which a lot of people know as the Aboriginals. And our language is um, like um, uh, Hawaiian and, and the Te Reo Maori, uh, Olelo Hawaii and uh, Te Reo Maori. Uh, so basically, if uh, someone in someone speaks in Te Reo Maori, I can I can fairly understand what what they're saying. And same thing with uh, if someone speaks in uh, the native Hawaiian language. Um, yeah. So so. Pacific, 2.2 million Indian peoples, 999 islands uh, at this point. Um, Google it if you can. If you think, uh, thought that I was talking about Morocco, no, I'm not from Morocco. A lot of people think I'm from Morocco because I say Maluku, but it's not. Um, I've had so many instances at the UN. Oh, yes, uh, Maluku, yes, I know. Uh, North Africa, right? No, it's not Northern Africa. Uh, So they... I'm always mix it up with with uh, Morocco. Maybe it is their understanding or my pronunciation. I still don't, I still don't know the exact reason why. Um, but um, yeah, currently though occupied by Indonesia, um, we used to be independent. Um, we were well, we used to be a Dutch colony, by the way. Uh, for three hundred years, uh, we were colonized by the Dutch. Um, so up up until. What was it? 1945, 1950. Um, the Dutch left their colony, um, started this whole, this whole decolonization process, gave us the option to uh, become independent, and obviously we took it because we saw that as a peoples, we could not survive um, because there was a one, one politician, um, Scarno, that was about to invade all these islands and wanted to instead of like a United States of Indonesia, which was supposedly be the idea. Um, he wanted to create a republic of Indonesia. Um, so we thought that was not a good thing. We could not survive as a peoples, as a self-determined peoples. So, um, yeah, uh, um, the, because of independence uh, on April 25th, 1950. Um, the problem was, um, so the Dutch government um, had a army that was protecting the, 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 this colony so um, a lot of our men, uh, because they kept wages and salaries artificially low, had to uh, enlist into the Dutch uh, East Indies Army because the colony was called Dutch East Indies. Uh, what happened was um, 
So he had like thousands of men in the army uh, that used to fight for the Dutch against the Japanese and, and, and all the other all these other uh, nations. Um, so Connor wanted to invade our countries. We, did, we just now declared our independence. Um, so what Connor did, he asked the Dutch, all right, uh, I want to invade these, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He asked the Dutch to uh, do something about these soldiers that were about to defend their newborn republic. And he didn't. He wanted to invade our islands, uh, but he could not do that with all these soldiers waiting to uh, defend the island. So what he did, uh, what the Dutch did, is all right, they ordered all these men, all they were in the in the army uh, and their families onto sh uh, ships, boats, and shipped them off to Holland. Um, so um, it took it took them like two to three years actually to ship every single all these these families to off to Holland, and so. All these soldiers were on their way to 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 to, to Dutch soil, but our republic was defenseless. They couldn't couldn't defend themselves. Um, turned into a guerrilla warfare, uh, overrun in, in, in time, and so when all the Dutch families that were the the, the soldiers and the families and those families were like uh, uh, like husband wife and like at least five to seven. Uh, five or nine children um, on ships, and then when they landed, uh, these children were landed in in in, in Holland. Um, the Dutch army they um, told the the soldiers that you're no longer uh, you you hereby relieved from duty from the Dutch East Indies Army. Um, mind you, it was in 1950, so the Second World War World War just ended. Um, so we, in in Europe, you had a lot of former Nazi camps, camps, obviously. So the Germans they left the, the Nazi camps from the front door, and the Dutch they uh, put our families, or my grandfather, uh, grandparents, and their children, families into these not former Nazi camps through the back door. Um, so the Dutch people did not know for six months at least that that there were like a, a, a peoples, an entire community. Um, that that was um, was on their lands, and we were promised to go to be go to go back. They would send us back um, after six months. But six months turned into six years, sixteen years, and now we have approximately seventy years and a, a community of approximately forty five thousand of Maluku natives living in Holland, like in, due to forced relocation. So, we have two point two million on the islands and. Uh, 45,000 um, living on Dutch soil, and I am uh, one of those that were, yeah, that lived on Dutch soil uh, the, in, in, in Holland, uh, the Netherlands, uh, because of this forced location. Um, a lot of injustice happening. Uh, obviously, my mom was, uh, um, yeah, a political. What went to the United UN when she was 17 to to uh, to fight against this injustice. Um, at some point, when I was 15, um, my mom asked me, what are you going to do next week? I don't know, plant trees or play outside with my fr friends, I don't know. She said, no, you're going to come with me to the UN. Um, so, and that's when the wheels came out the wagon or when, uh, actually, that started my whole experience journey in the United Nations. Right now, we're, I'm, 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 I'm touching the 18-year mark. At the, at the at the uh, of advocating for indigenous rights at, at the at the United Nations, so that's basically like my origin story of where I'm from and why I do what I do and continue doing what I do. Um, so it, it started off with my own indigenous peoples. We're called the Alifuru people, um, and but soon enough, I was like, yeah, you know what? Um, and they're more, like this. Before I felt this confrontation, um, like to explain who I am at the UN, I did not have to because you run into into your your, your Pacific rel relatives, your Arctic relatives, including the Sami and the the the, the others from Turtle Island, Latin America, and feels like it's like a warm bath, you know, like, like yeah, you, that, that you're related. It's one big family, and uh, so that's what kept me going and going. And then soon enough, I was like, you know what, I'll just. Try to defend all the rights of all indig indigenous peoples and help out wherever I can. Um, so, what's led me to 
yeah, some interesting roles leading up to the I'm a Sami boy um, um, come, uh, uh, anecdotes. Um, so what, when was that? 2014, I, was it 2014 or 2013 actually, a year before that. Um, so there was this, this um, does that still exist uh, by the way, the SSN, the Sami Youth Network? Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. do. So Aslak, in a uh, what, like a couple of years ago, when he was still young, still he looks young though, by the way. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, was part of the the Sami Youth Network on, uh, and with um, yeah, a lot of good friends, obviously. Uh, Rosa Maran, uh who else? Uh, yeah. I think it was Anna Maria. Uh, Anna, oh yeah, sorry, Anna Maria. Yeah. Yeah, um, so there was there was this uh, quite a, um, a delegation of the Sami Youth Network, and I don't think I think there was this weekend before between so the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues it is in New York, two weeks, uh, two weeks apart work. So the weekend in between, we have a little bit of free time to do whatever we want to do, um, and do some sightseeing because the. The, the the Sami Youth Network delegates, um, yeah, have not been to New York before or did not know that, like the uh, some spaces of some fun places to visit in New York. So what we did, um, so I took them on a tour of uh, of New York. Uh, did the um, went to, you know, I don't know what we did. We did a lot of things. Uh, Highline, we, we ended up with the Highline, but we went to like Empire State Building. Um, the Statue of Liberty. If you want to do visit the Statue of Liberty, do it for free. Take the Staten Island Ferry. Do not take the ferry to this, to the to the to, to Lady Liberty because that's um, and you don't you don't get to see a good view anyway. Uh, so stay, take the Staten Island Ferry. So we did a lot of things, and we ended up the ended up the evening in the apartment of the um, the some one of the Sami Youth Network delegates. And that's where the little, literally the wheels came off the wagon because, um, um, yeah, there was this, this, I don't know, like some kind of a, it, it was fun though. It was fun. It was some kind of a, uh, uh <laughs> ceremony slash ritual activity. Um, so they made me do the Corona yoik and, uh, sing I'm a Sami boy, um, which is, um, uh yeah if you're so if you're on youtube or, or like yeah take a note corona yoik uh you can, you can google it go, go on youtube and after that do i'm a sami boy it's a i'm a oh. <laughs> um so yeah they made me do that and that's how we got inducted inducted to the the sami community as a sami boy um so that's the okay. video material there is video material yes there is um, it should also be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Like, uh, <laughs> um, I, I remember there was some footage of it. Um, but yeah, there was very Corona, interesting. Corona Yoik and uh, uh, singing I'm a Sami boy. Um, so I'll yeah, never, yeah. never forget that. So that's the, um, the family friendly version of. Um, of the of the, the I'm a, how I became I'm a Sami how we became a Sami boy and then that's we've been yeah like we've been maintaining actually every year um, uh, yeah I think yeah okay okay <laughs> so yeah yeah I, I was expecting diff a different story on, on the Sami boy thing but but that's oh, a great oh. story so what, what maybe, were you expecting maybe not the maybe not the family version. Um, yeah, like uh, there's, um, I, I'll, I'll probably like, I'm, um, hopefully, yeah, probably, um, I think like at some point my grandchildren will listen to this podcast. So like yeah, probably yeah. have to like, keep, yeah. it, <laughs> keep it, uh, family friendly, but, um, yeah, but at least yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not that very, 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 very strange or something like weird things happened. Uh, but it was, um, that was fun. Like it was, um, uh, yeah. Maybe there was also a little bit of alcohol involved, but it's, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So, that, yeah, that's, that's the Amasami boy um, uh, story. 
Yeah. Did did I forget anything, uh, Aslan? Or no, I think uh, I think that was a good uh, good coverage of uh, of the events of that uh, uh, two weeks, or I don't know what, what was the time frame for that story, but yeah, it was something like that. Two days. It was two days, I think. Yeah. We were in New York for two weeks, so, but or at least a little bit over a week. Um, but that yeah. was, I think, it was, yeah, it was it was in the weekend between the two weeks of the the perm forum on indigenous issues. Yeah. yeah, I have to tell a story story about that weekend in in New York. Uh, it's you should never go with Aslat on sightseeing. It's it's very dangerous. <laughs> we 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 ended up in some park where there were some, I think they were very bad people. And we were like, I had my mountain rain jacket on with still muddy from cloudberry picking. So, so, so I kind of, kind of was undercover there, but yeah. it was really bad. <laughs> Wait, so what did I, you take I was, a... I, Huh? We went to, where was that? Harlem think, someplace. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think we were in Harlem. Yeah. And Maybe. we got lost in some park. And the other thing he forced me to do is, was to take a bicycle trip through New York with those rental bikes. <laughs> and I, I, I almost died at least 50 times on that trip. The traffic, you know, there are, there are, there are tens of millions of cars on every corner. Yeah. And, and, and we have like 10 car, cars a day on our road. So then you can dive into the ditch whenever there comes a car. So that's, that was terrifying. So then that's my advice for whoever is listening. Don't go with us like on sightseeing in New York. So it was good thing, Gazeli, that you were in charge of the, the tour back then. I was about to say, because we could have lost some very good... Like, yeah, so, some very good people um, in, in that um, sightseeing tour. Anna Maria, Rosa Marin, uh, 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 Ida Maria. Aleta, Ida Maria. Yeah. We could have lost some good people over there if, if you um, if we let you take that. Because I remember, yeah, hold on. Like, well, things, come, things are servicing right now. Because um, I remember that um, uh, we were in the subway um, on a way to yeah um well what was it yeah on, on our way to the the uh, statue of liberty to the seven on ferry and remember that the only one that was carrying a map of new york was aslat well like he was and he was like all right where are we going like he wanted to know everything and i remember there was some point that you you were like, uh, um, this is a better way of, of, of like a, a, tr a better train to take to uh, uh, the High Line or something, which would take us like into the total opposite direction um, of, of where we needed to go. So, uh, um, yeah, I can, uh, yeah, I can, I can, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm glad that, uh, that, um, uh, that, that, that didn't happen because otherwise, because, Conan Island is okay because that, that that's very far away. But if you don't want to get lost in Harlem, though, or or, or Bronx, or uh, yeah, I found some photo material of us in the in the ferry. All right, yeah, that's the, the yeah yeah. I'm looking like I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like oh, I want to go somewhere else. I know a better route to. Uh, <laughs> uh, like better, better sightseeing tour. <laughs> yeah, that, that was fun. Um, oh, we did. Yeah. We, oh, I, I have I, to correct myself. I, I <laughs> have to correct myself with that. Oh. He's a great, great guy to be on tour with. So, so that's clear. Don't be afraid of us. I oh think, no, I it, got bad conscious it, now. It'll, it'll be an adventure. That, that's what, what it yeah, will be. Yeah, yeah. If, if you, if you, if you want to have a Here's the thing, like, um, um, if you want to go on, on a tour that is, all right, show you the, it's like predetermined uh, um, through New York, because we went to um, Chinatown, Little Italy, we, went, we had lunch in Little Italy, I believe, and went through a tour through, through New York, right, you know, that's, I'm your guy. Um, but 
um, if you want to do like the adventure version, as in like, um, uh, yeah, you just just live or like live Indiana life. Jones style, like yeah. <laughs> in the Indiana Jones style, and uh, yeah, exactly. Meets Tarzan, meets uh, what, um, um, I don't know. Um, then then Azlat is your guy. You know, like you can yeah. you can you can try out different things. Um, live living on the edge, I would say. Like do do like fear factor. Sami, um, Sami style, like that, that, that show. Exactly. Yeah, and if you want to do like this nomadic style, then you should go with me. Aslak was kind of very tired with my ambitions regarding driving long distances. Because after New York so that year, we went on this two, two week trip by car. So in those two weeks, we visited friends that we met when we were there uh, during the Standing Rock movement mm. we went there for a month back in 2000 and was it 16 yeah yeah 2016 uh, yeah yeah so we went uh, back visiting our friends there and then we went on this small small road trip so we got i don't remember in miles but uh, 550 i believe 5500 kilometers on those two yeah. weeks yeah. so aslat was kind of tired uh, but i i i enjoy to drive those long distances man you should you should have started the podcast back then like if you if you uh if you've driven like all those those miles like five thousand kilometers that would have some yeah but we did an episode in washington at least mm, okay yeah. did, you also, those, uh, those did you also do weeks. like um was it like road trip songs did you have like mixtapes and everything else or not the, no i i made some like snapchat funny snapchat videos like three on those two weeks. <laughs> 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 One was a getaway getaway video in, in Rapid City. That was quite funny. Yeah. Look, it's, it's not good. family yeah. friendly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we can't, we, can't, yeah. we can't put it on YouTube. Because I was like, you're a singer. Like, you, you sing, right? Or like, like, like you, I see your, some videos on, on Facebook. You, you play... Was it a guitar instrument? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, now since uh, <clears throat> since having to be at home for a long, 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 long time, <laughs> um, I've gotten into playing guitar again. I mean, I've started playing long, long back, but I've had many years of break, and it kind of comes and goes. But now, yeah, since I've spent so much time at home, then I kind of picked it up. Um, like um yeah last year so yeah then i decided to um publish a few songs and i've gotten even this uh, little uh, little home studio with this mic that i'm using now and yeah it's this uh, this uh, pastime activity that i've had mainly some uh, some classic sammy cover songs uh, not not the sammy boy one but some some others well, like it is a classic, right? Sammy Boy and Corona Yoit. Yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So, so you you, you think of, about like yeah, continue doing that like post uh, post lockdown kind of thing. Can you recording music, play music? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's um it kind of comes and goes like sometimes i feel like doing it and then for a long time not so i don't really know what's the what's the trigger with that but uh, i mean i'll see how it uh, how it feels and i mean i'm i'm playing and practicing some stuff uh, quite uh, at least now and then so i think i'll be uh, releasing something in in a while but uh, okay yeah yeah, Aslat, Aslat was so such inspiring that I bought myself a Christmas present for the first time. And it was a guitar, but I'm really suck at it by now. So I, I, I won't release anything. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, um, you, uh, you taking lessons or? or um... No, no, I just watch YouTube. You watch YouTube? Yeah, yeah. what's well, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's, so it's very great, great practice when uh, we can travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, 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 what is the, what is it? So, I was like, is, is that, 
when you can travel like and this whole like lockdown kind of thing you how about you guys you know like you discovered a lot of things about yourself or like start creating these hobbies that you you think you would never do or picking up things that you would never do before um yeah no, well, actually it's uh, for me it's very strange it seems mm -hmm. like that there is more work now when we are in lockdown because everyone seems to think that okay just let's load everything on on the online uh, platform so then i have got kind of overwhelmed with work uh, after the lockdown right Contra in, in in contradiction to how it used to be then you had this physical spaces where you tie your stuff to but now you have everything in your in your laptop so, so it's it's a very strange mechanism. It has been. Mm. Yeah, but I've, obviously uh, we have to learn this new way of of life, for now at least. Yeah, but it has had the same impact for me also. I have actually more work than I had before, and I think yeah, one reason for that for sure is that um, uh, the travel budget is saved. So organizations realize that okay we have this funding so let's uh, let's hire somebody to do this thing and let's create this kind of course and uh, this kind of paper and so on so yeah i've had uh, plenty of projects uh, coming up uh, because of the lockdown so definitely mm. I have enough enough stuff to do for for the work side uh, as well yeah yeah but we we shouldn't complain there are many people who are now out of work because of this so mm, true yeah 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 it's it's so i yeah i was obviously like everyone else was hoping that they would wouldn't, they wouldn't last as long but like as you progress through the months through the year already the yeah i started to adapt my whole life actually to like uh um the online world and like so like every week you have almost like, like three to four meetings zoom meetings a day and on top of that you're doing a podcast but but podcasting is a, is a fun thing obviously um but you know it is uh, so yeah like, like you said you know it is everything now fits within your laptop now you know, you, you, and there's yeah a lot more yeah you, i agree actually because uh, on top of that you develop like like new hobbies um there's also like in terms of work there's a lot more work actually that, that, that comes across your desk and and uh which is if people this is here's what, here's what my friends think actually is that uh, because the un is closed that i just sit back relax binge watch netflix um and i don't know and do nothing actually good but the opposite is true yeah, yeah. because everything is because everything is closed and everything is, everyone is at home everyone does have a webcam by now everything goes virtually like there the, the webinars like this almost like death by webinar at this point like there's so many webinars um that um you either got invited to or you want to listen into but you know it, it is right now is yeah like it's almost all this for me at least from the webinar that, that, that i come uh, come across my desk they're almost all the same you know it, it's, it's almost the same format and um so in, in that sense it's kind of tiring as well it, it wears you out and uh, like your energy level go, goes uh yeah there's there's a lot it requires a lot of energy um, yeah, for me, the first like eight and nine months without the travel, it was very good because I was really tired of always driving and flying around. Mm. But then it, it got to the point that I realized I really need people to interact with, not only through the screen, but actually around the tables and in the, in the yeah. <laughs> I almost say in the closets, but, but mm. not in the closets. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you get what I mean. But to interact with people and in in real life, and yeah. and I think we, if we don't or if I don't learn to to do that interactively, interactively, it's it's uh, then it will be really tiresome if if this lasts for years to come. So I also hope we can get to meet again soon. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I had a very similar uh, experience actually. Um, yeah, I, I travel very much uh, on a normal normal year. And actually, a year ago, um, I kind of felt like uh, I don't really want to travel so much, but I had these meetings coming up and I usually extend my meeting trips to kind of uh, look around the area and then go to the next meeting from there and not always go come back home because, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of traveling back and forth. But I was feeling like, um, yeah, I would kind of want to stay at home a bit. And then my my wishes did come true and I got to spend uh, months and months. And now it's a year. Um, yeah, yeah, it's almost a year since I came home. Mm. And uh, yeah, same as uh, Pasca then. I didn't actually mind it. I enjoyed uh, staying at home a lot. Um, I think it was, uh, yeah, um, till uh, till the dark time hit here, and you know we live above the Arctic Circle here, and and we don't get any sunlight for a couple of months. So uh, I mean that was a time when uh, when I started feeling like, yeah, this uh, this apartment is quite small <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. And they, yeah, there is no light. There was barely any snow, and yeah, it was um, at that time I started feeling like I need, I need to go somewhere and meet some people. Yeah, but yeah. Now we, now we get the sun uh, again, and we have a lot of snow now, so it's uh, definitely we're going towards the light now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a lot to, lot to cope with uh, for sure. Um. But yeah, that mm. was for the, for the work part. But uh, what comes to the to the hobby side then? Um, um, yeah, in a year ago when I was actually in Italy uh, in a meeting, when uh, when the pandemic hit uh, Italy, or it wasn't even declared a pandemic at the time. But anyway, I had to uh, come home then, and I was in quarantine for two weeks. And uh, on the way here, I was thinking that. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna try to make the most out of this. So, and uh, I'm gonna really put an effort into it not being a very solitary thing to be in in um, um, quarantine. Mm. So then I uh, I made a list of things uh, like these little uh, skills or things that I've done uh, during the years, and I I thought that every day I will publish something that uh, yeah one day I will. Uh, I will sing a song one day. I will uh, perform a yoik. Mm. Maybe I will juggle a little bit. Then I will tell a story. And I don't remember how many things I had on the list. I I didn't really uh, execute all of them, but at least uh, that's where the idea kind of came from. And then it en- ended up being much more songs than <laughs> was planned in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then also, yeah, I shared a few few stories from my traveling years back in the day and. Yeah, it was this um, effort of uh, of uh, trying to keep contact with the world and share some things, even if I I was uh, and still am most of the time in my home. So that kind of uh, I didn't do it every day, but then I did it for over the months. So yeah, yeah. Like for for me, um, did not did not know what to do uh, at first, so I just. Um, I felt disconnected, obviously, uh, uh, but also like because the, the 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 one of the things that I really liked liked of traveling and the work was also always like meeting friends, like like hanging out, having conversations like these, but in person. I know I was missing that, so uh, I just like figured out, you know what, I'll just 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 do like Zoom calls in in the beginning, and yeah, in terms of hobbies. And that obviously ended up in like doing more podcasts. Um, at one point, I was so bored that I started um, doing riddles. So I had recorded like TikTok videos, and like, all right, um, I did. So I did three things: trivia. Um, so indigenous trivia, I did riddles, and fun with flags. So and like. On TikTok, yeah. So like, I posted these all these videos on on, on TikTok for for a while. Um, no, well, I recorded like a, it took me an entire day to record almost forty eight videos of of, of of yeah thirty seconds mm. or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but it was fun though. It was fun to do. 
So I, yeah, I just yeah something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, fun to do. I just, yeah, just, um, instead of like, like I can't dance, I can't dance at all. So like, um, doing yeah, a TikTok can? dance video. Asla, that, that's, Asla can dance. Asla can dance. Oh yeah. You, you can dance. Like, I think he's putting on music right now so he can show us how, um, show, show us a dance. Um, I don't know. What, what, what is he doing? He used to boil tea for himself. When ah. he gets, uh, gets, uh, good idea. To us. No, I don't That's know. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is a good idea, though. Yeah, I think yeah. my tea is already my tea has already turned into iced tea at, at this point. Um, but yeah, and then and then all yeah, and then all these online meetings started to to emerge. And then in in the beginning, I was like, all right, um, well, let me. Uh, make sure that I have a, a, a shirt on, like a dress shirt, nice shirt, and 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 a tie and everything else. That was in the beginning, and like the longer this lockdown, it, um, um, yeah, the little, yeah, and I'm I'm at this point right now that I'm I don't even care anymore. Um, yeah, sweater, it's fine. Um, I do wear pants. That that, that I do wear. Um, like there, there's, um, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 now, the, right the, now, or on every online meeting. Um, I can't confirm nor deny that it will do it every meeting. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, um, yeah, every meeting I'll, I do wear pants. I actually, in one <laughs> meeting, and it was actually uh, um, when was it? Yeah, oceans, ocean negotiations. <laughs> Because um, we're still having these online conversations on, on uh, biodiversity of oceans. Um, so at one point, I uh, was like, you know what? Let's let's see. Let let let's let let. I won't say spice up, but what? Yeah, well, like Lo loosen up. Loosen up a little bit. Yeah, that, that that's what yeah. it is. So I changed my background um, into so like a, a screen that said. Definitely wearing pants, and I just, just <laughs> and I I just opened up my my, my camera and and just sat around. And I took notes, and you saw people like. <laughs> so so anyway, yeah, like like make it come alive a little bit. So that's and I I was definitely wearing pants. Um, I would not recommend it into high level negotiations though to do that. But like if it's like informal. Chatham House rules conversations I did not get recorded in the notes, luckily. Uh, but I did, did get some, you know, like some uh, some good feedback. Like, like that's it's um, on top of the substantial things that I said in that meeting, luckily. Uh, but like, yeah, people also liked that the fun side of things because you need to, yeah, have a little bit of fun with all these. Yeah, yeah. I have to share one one experience I've had. Um, so yeah, I also have a lot of we webinars and online meetings, and um, not all of them are the kinds where you need to pay attention every minute. So quite often I kind of have the meeting in the background, and I might take my guitar and um, yeah, practice some chords, and sometimes yeah. sing and. And once this happened, uh, I was in this um, consultation of the Finnish um, <clears throat> Ministry of Environment. Uh, it was about the new Climate Change uh, Act. And um, there was a little break in, in the meeting. So as uh, I have a custom, I, I took my guitar and I started singing a song. And, and for some reason, I did it like... Um, especially in an opera way so i was like excessively basically shouting the song and i realized that the discussion uh, what was going on during the break it went silent and i noticed i had not muted myself so oh wow everybody oh, heard wow. my <laughs> really really strong strong melancholic uh, song there so then i just said ah, <laughs> oh <is> wow <laughs> Funny break. That, oh man, that's like my worst online nightmare. Doing something like that, and then. <laughs> what do you think was that? 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was uh, um, this hearing about the uh, climate change law and how they <laughs> nothing big, you know, nothing yeah, big. It's uh, just uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it recorded? No, I I don't think so. No. Okay, that's too. Yes, yeah, some things are better not recorded because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can they can definitely be used against you at some point. Um, especially when you're. How did running. they take it? Did they like it, or or was it really bad? Well, uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> like, they were like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> they didn't really get much more of a, a response. Than that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just, one, yeah. one thing. I, I wanted to ask you one thing about. Uh, it, it occurred to me when you said 999 islands, but mm -hmm. I saw saw some place I don't remember where on social media that you you have you have now uh, ambition of releasing one episode podcast episode a day. Did I do I remember this correct or yeah or what? Okay, that's we're really ambitious. We our ambition is one one a month, and we can't be. <laughs> Every full moon, yeah. No, it is. Well, it's <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so this is my ambition in terms of like um, in six years, though, um, to have like one, once, yeah, one a podcast that has a daily episodes, but it's not just daily, every day doing these long form conversations, but you, that you have. Yeah, a variety of, of things um, that okay. every day there, there's a little bit of, yeah, um, it could be like a how-to thing, a tutorial or, or some thoughts or whatever, um, just, just... Yeah, some content. Some content, actually. But it is actually, yeah. that, that is, I'm not, not, I'm not talking about, because well, otherwise, because if I could do it right now, but then it would just be like uploading for the sake of uploading things, like creating content for yeah. the sake of, up, and so like I could, I could... We form a book, you know, and then and then um, call it yeah, and then they call it one episode. I just really want to, um, and I think when, yeah, I just people need to know actually. Um, I th and it goes back to what I said earlier: the self determination is a mindset that you need to think in a decolonial way, in a decolonized way, um, and. Which also, if if you're in this work that like you have to, yeah, like when everything was open, like I had, um, yeah, almost for example, like that 2020, and that was, was supposed to be like a super year in terms of in terms of processes, right? biodiversity, and uh, there was this COP in China, um, climate change. Um, so I'm doing climate change oceans, uh, enhanced participation, human rights, and a lot of other things on the side. And it's like, it would, that would, uh, yeah, make me travel like for, usually I travel like 15 times a year, but that would put put the, the number on 25 times a year or something. So I would have like almost every day something to do um, if there wasn't, the, the, if COVID wasn't, COVID wasn't around. Um, so in a way, like the, you're, you're dealing, you're working with indigenous rights and and uh, and self determination and everything every day. So every day you're just thinking about about something. So I was I was thought oh, my idea was last year was to record it. You know, like to have like all right, I'm right now I'm doing this. Uh, work, I'm thinking about that. This is what I, how I think about um, the future of. Indigenous activism, uh, the future of self determination, all these, all these things, and they don't necessarily have to be true, as in like it has to be like accepted by everyone, but just how you think about things, um, how you think about um, self determination, um, land rights, fishing rights, traditional knowledge, all the, all these things, um, just to uh, so this is what I was thinking of doing. So that that's how that whole idea of um, one thing is to show people about the um, what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to uh, um, indigenous rights activism or advocacy, 
um, at the national level or international level. Um, that it's you, you, you're dealing with it every day. Um, you're, you're working on it every day, and a lot of people don't know that. Um, they think that they only yeah. see when you're going to Geneva or or um, or New York, and they think so that that it goes like this, ebb and flows, right? Like, um, but it's actually constant. You, 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 um, yeah, it's a journey, a process. Yeah, it's it's a Only process time. that it has to keep on going every every, every day actually, and um, yeah, that's what I wanted to wanted to show actually, or, or make people aware of. I mean, maybe that's a better way of describing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's yeah. a very it's a very <laughs> big ambition, but very good one. Yeah, well, um, it is. When, we, we, we and it's me and us, like we have. We have limited ourselves quite a bit. We have some more rooms. It uh, when we ever we record, it's supposed to be outside, or in a lab or in a oh. like this tur tur traditional turf, yeah. turf house. We have and uh, and also we both have to be present, and uh, you know the national borders have been closing and and opening now for for the last year. Mm -hmm. So it has been been hard to to actually meet in person, even though we live very very close, yeah, uh, close by. Mm -hmm. And what's the third rule? Yeah, those were the two rules. Yeah, and one every full moon, but that has gone out the <laughs> third, <laughs> window. Third, it's actually third rule, the first, yeah. It's the first time that we are breaking uh, one of the rules. Oh boy! Yeah, I, th I thought this was okay since it's your podcast and we're like read this oh, okay. on, on okay. our our platform. So, yeah, so then we are not actually breaking; we are just bending them, and that's allowed. <laughs> you should always try to bend the rules. You sound like awfully lot like a politician. <laughs> 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 we're not breaking them; we're just interpreting them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we're bending them a little bit. No, yeah, but it's it's a it's a good rule though. Um, yeah, they just whatever keeps it authentic, right? Uh, keeps it keeps it fun. Yeah, you need to it needs to stay fun for you to do. Otherwise, yeah, and also because uh, the concept is is uh, decolonization, and uh, and in this book, this very old book by by uh, now it's a still stand in my head, Johan Turi, who wrote uh, the first Sami to write about everyday life sami everyday life okay uh, he he wrote that uh, that uh, the sami he can't think inside four walls he have to go on the mountain top and feel the wind in his nose and then the mind can start to to grind so that's yeah. the that's the philosophy back behind it and i really believe that to be true it's it's a total you get total different mindset and different Different uh, way of uh, of uh, behaving and and, uh, and make those conversations when you leave the meeting room and, and go outside for for the talk. So yeah. so that's that's uh, I I think that's a really important rule. So so we had to we, we have to 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 make this your episode that we just redistribute. <laughs> yeah. So let's the next episode then like if we do the reverse. Um, that on your on your um, according to your rules, um, definitely again and the, by all means, yeah, the super good rules actually. And I, I think also better when I when I go for a walk when I'm outside. Like every yeah, I, yeah. I, I sit along I sit in long meetings. Yes, do a lot of work, um, write a lot, but to process everything, I just I just go for a walk, um, just or go for a run every day. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's uh, that's super good for for a human. So not just for indigenous people, but I think like for human like in yeah, general for too. Everyone. For everyone, of course. Go go outside, go for a walk, breathe fresh air, and um, yeah, think about things. Um, and yeah, like at, at first, like I was, I was putting on music, but then again, and then at, and, and at some point, I was like, you know what? I just go for a walk, go for a run, I just have a. Yeah, to just just process everything, and sometimes I just talk to myself, like in my head, to uh, to yeah, make sense of everything. Actually, so yeah, so uh, I actually uh, also used to talk to myself, but not in my head, and it has been a few awkward moments. What? Well, well, <laughs> yeah, what because do you mean awkward moments? Yeah, but in the start, people people 
thought that uh, yeah, he's just I, by the start, I mean before this technology came, whenever people were talking to themselves, they were they were just talking to themselves. And then we got these small hands-free units. So people were talking to themselves all the time and people got used to that. Okay, he's probably on a phone call. So now when when one is talking to when you're talking to yourself and they realize you don't have the hands free, then it becomes really awkward. You should try it. Try it. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. I, I wrote a study once um, that 80% of women that are walking outside in early in the late afternoon, early in the evening, or in the evening, um, and that are t- on a phone, 80% of them are not talking to someone else. And yeah. I, 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 yeah, 80%. Like, it was a worldwide study. I, I think it was, it was in Reader's Digest or something. 80% of them. But what they are just pretending. Yeah, pretending, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and that, the, the, reason, uh, the reason for that wow. was... Um, because it, it gave them, gave them a sense of sec- security. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, sent a signal to um, predators or, 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 like, potential predators that um, they're not alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, like, so, so when I re- read that, that, that study, like, first of all, like, someone, yeah, like, how, how far has, have we come as a, as a world society that, that eighty percent of women have to do that. You know, like it's it's kind of a s- sick. Yeah, um, it's really sad. Sad, sad. Yeah, sad. Yeah, perception actually that um, that there are men out there that are there are dickheads that are assholes that that that, that, that ruin it for everyone else. That now that eighty percent of women are on their phones, acting like they're having a conversation, whereas yeah. they're not. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like this sh- sh- shield system. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that's a lot. Eighty percent. Yeah. If if you like, well, eighty percent. Like, did, it was a worldwide worldwide study. Eighty percent of the of the women that were uh, interviewed. You know, so it's not yeah. like eighty. Yeah, yeah. Percent, but um, worldwide study, eighty percent, and it was published in Reader's Digest a while ago. I have to look it up. Because uh, it was it was quite confronting actually, yeah. uh, and and sad. I think that the, the biggest emotion that went through me was, was sadness. Because like wow, that that women nowadays feel so, um, uh, yeah. How, how to, what's the, what's the word? For yeah, it? I don't know. Maybe that goes both ways. It's it's of course obviously really sad and and bad that that has to be necessary, but. But at least now there, it's that you can have that function with the with the phone. Yeah. Now that everyone knows that you could be talking to someone, it's not that far. That long time ago, we got mobile phones, so it's a yeah, new yeah. tool, of course. But it's sad that it has to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. The protection whole. tool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it would be really interesting. To, it would be really interesting to read that if you can find yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll try to find it. It was it was a while ago, I think. Yeah, um, I'll have to Google it again. Try to find my Google skills. Um, do, 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 yeah, it's it's quite a high number, and then it's, um, yeah, it makes me think of a, like what what kind of an asshole actually like, um, because there, there's always this, um. When this, this, this obviously this whole um, study was triggered by by a certain event, like like that there's something happened in the world that people find a need to study it. So like, and when something happens in the world, like it's already, um, it's a lo- no longer an incident. You know, it, it's it's already like something that happens often. Otherwise, it doesn't make the news. You know, yeah. so. Um, so yeah, so it was happening long before the study came out, I would assume. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's very sad that something like that happens. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't see Sami women walking around in the, on the phones though, in New York or everywhere else. Seems pretty strong, right? Or that's about. Yeah, probably we are working together. Yeah, 
in those places. Yeah. Jesus. You have seen them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they definitely. Man, how do we, how do we get onto this? Anyway, all right. Well, let's let's all right. Let, let's talk about because because um, I don't I don't want to uh, mess up your your guidelines and principles, uh, self determination and decolonization. Any any thoughts on that? And what is what is your what's your latest um, uh, epiphany or understanding of it? Or what do you see? Well, the most recent uh, problem here right now, it's the national border. Uh, mm. Definitely. It has affected our daily life very, very much. Uh, like legally, I can't go to Aslat now. And in, we, we don't have any, any infected people in the whole, whole region. Mm. But, but the rules are decided without our involvement, our consent, or anything, the close downs of the borders from down south, both Helsinki and Oslo. And, and uh, it seems that there is no desire or will to listen to our, our situation and our, our needs. It seems a little bit better on, on Finnish side, but uh, when, when, uh, whenever I have tried and others have tried with the Norwegian government, the, there, is not, there is zero understanding of of how this affects us, and mm. and of course it's a very important important to to uh, protect people and to to make this uh, in millionuamu uh, infections. Mm. Yeah, this uh, to control the infections and and whatever uh, that's that's clear for everyone. But uh, but uh, you should be able to to uh, deal with it differently wherever there is different situations like we have here there are very little people and very good control and little traffic pro and and and, and so we have we have a very good systems also in the municipalities to track down uh, if there was to come any infection so so that's a really big big uh, issue right now like the most recent that actually is affecting uh, the communities on both sides of this border. So, and, and uh, Aslat has, what was it, two, three weeks ago by the Sami Council, or the Sami Council, and Aslat has, has been writing this statement that deals with that issue. So that's like one example what we, what, what we are working on right now. Yeah, and it really the... affects, self, yeah. Yeah, it's the first time uh, during my lifetime that uh, this border actually makes a difference here. Mm. Um, well, it's it's mainly in the in the land border, and uh, yeah, like if you want to cross the border to go to Norway, then there is first the Finnish border patrol, then there is the Norwegian, uh, what do you call it, uh, basically the military national return. guard. Yeah, national guard, and then the police after them. So it's like a many many layers of stoppages and and uh, yeah the the rules change almost daily so people don't really know what's what's gonna happen if they're able to pass uh, if not so yeah this is uh, it's quite a strange um, situation um, for this region because yeah as i said uh, it's the first time in my life that the border actually uh, exists in such a strong way mm. and um yeah, it's true that uh, for now Finland has been taking Sami into account in these um, restrictions. Like um, uh, they even write that um, um, that these uh, restrictions don't apply to Sami in in regards to Sami being able to cross the border at any place with uh, let's say with the snowmobile now that it's winter, because yeah, like here the river is the border between us so actually finland does allow that but uh, then again uh, norway doesn't allow it so it doesn't really make much of a practical uh. difference if uh, i am allowed to cross the border by finnish authorities but i'm not allowed to go to the go other back. side of yeah. the border yeah um, 
So definitely that has uh, changed uh, the lives uh, a lot here because uh, yeah now we really feel like there is uh, uh, yeah the different states are uh, separating us. Yeah, because because well a couple of days ago it was Sami National National Sami Day, right? The, the, the yeah. February sixth. Yeah. So how how did that go then? The, the celebration of it, um, different obviously, but with all these border yeah. patrols. Yeah, there was. Uh, very now uh, the border patrols it affected I think mostly Otsioka and Sirma, which is very close by here. They used used to those two two villages. They used to every other year celebrate in the other place, like one mm. year in Sirma and one year in Otsioka, and just jump back and forth. But obviously that wasn't going to happen this year and also everywhere there was uh, there were many many online events and it was not the usual celebration anywhere uh, that was that was not uh, of course going to happen but the uh, online content there was so much online content i saw that, uh, yeah I, I i couldn't cope with all of it but it, there were really really great to to be able to to at least be part of the celebration through the through the internet, yeah. but there was one one woman who actually tried this Finnish approach that Samis can cross, uh, and and she called the Finnish Finnish government or authorities and and asked if that is the case. Can she cross from Norway to Finland even though it's the closed border? And Finland agreed, and mm. then the border border patrol. Obviously, let her out of 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 Norway because Finnish Finnish uh, authorities agreed. So it works. It's uh, that, and that's a very very positive thing that that it is possible. But for now, people are not so aware of it. And like Aslat says, Norway has this very very uh, hard restrictions, and you, I think, you can get fined up to fifteen thousand kroner if you cross the border at any point without those those permissions mm. uh, back into norway so so it's a very very yeah hard hard uh, uh, governing of the border right now by norwegian side so 15000 kroner in euros it's about 1500 euros and that's that's a lot of money just that's to a... be able wow. to roam freely mm -hmm. in your own home home community so yeah that's 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 how it is now, but like Aslat said, it changes from day to day. So we just have but to. I, I saw this um, uh, link uh, that uh, Norway is preparing uh, a law. Uh, I don't know some special uh, special law for the pandemic, uh, which might allow them to close the border until the end of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's quite uh, quite a radical uh, approach to this thing and. Yeah, I mean, of course, as Pasca said, you uh, we have to be careful with this thing, but it doesn't really seem quite uh, just um, as uh, as we were pointing out in the in the press release that uh, we in the Sami Council wrote a couple of weeks ago that uh, it doesn't seem just that uh, let's say people from uh, the capital can come here. Uh, the capital is quite high uh, or, uh, infection rate area. Mm -hmm. But then we from the low infection rate area cannot go to see our neighbors or our brothers and sisters on the other side. So that seems very, uh, it seems too harsh and uh, yeah, not really yeah, taking into account that uh, the Sami as a people, we, we don't have one country in, in the same sense as... Uh, as uh, people who have uh, like the nation states of, of their peoples have. So we are by definition based in, in many different countries. So our communities are divided by the state border. So, so yeah, this is the first time that uh, we're experiencing these kinds of things. And, and when, uh, when they propose these, these legislation and, and laws and, and everything else, do they, they in any way consult or ask, permission or in some way from the the various no. parliaments no no, no. 
And uh, even this, um, as I mentioned, that Finland has now been taking into account the summit, and that didn't come. Uh, uh, it wasn't like their initiative. It was uh, like uh, when the restrictions started um, last spring, then uh, it did have a strong impact um, uh, for Sami at that time, especially on the Finnish-Swedish border uh, for the, let's say, the reindeer herders. They uh, traditionally, they come to Finland to go to their traditional areas in Sweden because there are no roads going there. So then when the border patrol didn't let them go, then that caused a lot of problem and problems. And um, yeah, people had to work on it. Uh, there were uh, uh, complaints done to different uh, authorities and uh, even some court cases started on, on this. So it didn't come uh, automatically, but yeah, people had to work on it. And But um, to an extent that did bear some fruit and, and now they are at least conscious of the of the fact that our our traditional territories and our lives don't follow the state borders so at least finland at this time seems to be aware of this but um, um it's strange because uh, at springtime norway was taking that into account better than finland but now the tables have turned so yeah we'll we'll see where this goes now uh, how come it, how how come do you think like they beat these tables that they turn actually because you would think that it's should be pretty consistent but it's how come it's no that? but of course the gov governments are all also learning this by doing that's that's mm -hmm. for sure this is a new new and, and very challenging situation for for a for every country to be in yeah uh, but 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 uh, uh, anyway you can't throw away human human rights and and indigenous rights even though it's a, a, a scary situation to be in and, yeah. and uh, they are obligated to take take that into account but that hasn't been done by now so so yeah like always it's it's ignorance in any, in every situation also in this situation but now it it really affects affects uh, everyday life in in a different way for for us so, yeah yeah we we'll, we'll just have to keep working on it obviously and and we will we'll do that. okay and did this i don't know i i uh, one one thing that also one question also popped into my head but not not those well sorry i should put it differently um one question that is um, that I get from a lot of people actually is um, when it comes to the vaccines of the, the, this all, all of the, the, this of this COVID um, is yeah are are the Sami are the Sami considered first or is is it because uh, they want to say like well, protect the vulnerable people and everything else but then again if you're not infected so why do you, why do you need the whole thing so is there is there, is there anyone talking about that? Um, not that I know of, no. It's mainly the discussion is about uh, uh, different age groups and uh, right. different, uh, professions and, and other, uh, and yeah, some risk groups and so. But uh, yeah, no, there hasn't been, to my knowledge, any discussion on, on the SAMI, especially on this matter. Yeah. Okay. No, I, the, those vaccines... They seem to be distributed evenly um, across the whole of, whole of the population in in the countries. Uh, yeah, and it's defined by by age and risk groups, and that's that's how it should be. Yeah, yeah. Whenever definitely. there is so, sh shortage of of vaccines, then whoever needs it most, of course. Yeah. So that's even evenly distributed. Yeah. Because because. Um... I'm I'm just I'm not, not shocked but surprised actually um that 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 the the, the central governments did not because that's why you have a parliament right yeah you know, we have the parliament on the Norwegian side the Swedish side and the Finnish side and then that they yeah like is is it is it something that that makes you question self determination in a bit that um, they did not at first. Didn't did not uh, consult the departments. 
how, how can I put it? It it isn't surprising to put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely. not surprising at all. It's 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 the same on other issues also. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and and uh, there are also, to be fair, many groups also in 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 the Finnish. Maybe I I don't know the Finnish situation that well, but in the Norwegian society also other groups that are not fairly fairly consulted or treated or taken into account. So it's a very broad broad. Uh, broad brush they are using to just cut, yeah cut it like across a, the board yeah it's like a one size fits all approach that, that's yeah, you, yeah. You do it on everyone yeah. yeah you see you see you see it everywhere that there, there's no tailored approach whereas yeah you would think if, if there's low infection rate in, in, in sami that, that that's it has the level of restriction restriction can be a little bit like loosened compared to the, the big cities as in oslo helsinki and, and I mean, yeah, yeah, there there used to be this uh, concept of border communities uh, um, who were allowed to uh, interact and cross the border, uh, but yeah, for for some reason that was uh, uh, left out of the of the current uh, restrictions. But that was a way of addressing these uh, cross border communities. Yeah, yeah, from 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 the Finnish side, they they welcomed everyone living on the border. But now, last Saturday, I believe it was, then they, no, last Friday, Thursday, I don't remember. Last week mm. sometime, they closed it totally down, except yeah. for Samis, as they stated. So yeah, it's a music, actually, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite significant, because uh, to my knowledge, it's the first time that uh, uh, Finland has given some rights to Sami. Because yes. there isn't there isn't any rights that are attached to being Sami. Uh, because uh, let's say the rights to uh, use the territories to fish and hunt and so on, then they're, they're attached to uh, ownership of property. So there isn't uh, any indigenous rights per se, like collective rights for Sami. So to my knowledge, this is the first instance that uh, Sami have been granted uh, a right to cross the border freely and and that does not apply to the Finns. So mm. in, in that sense it's it's quite significant uh, step forward in the in the Finnish uh, Finnish debate that uh, actually yeah Sami have been acknowledged as um, as distinct yeah it's, the, yeah it's the first time since the the Sami Kotisilla. Hmm. And that's a couple of hundred uh, hundreds of years ago yeah so if we get granted rights every couple of hundred years then it's, <laughs> it's some progress, <laughs> progress at least. yeah you, you will we'll get there in a couple of thousand years if we would do yeah, it like yeah, yeah. at this place oh yeah then again this uh, lapta codicilla it was from 1751 and it was much more progressive than where we are now and yeah. actually even this uh, right granted by finland um, um, so to say, um, it is uh, guaranteed in, in Lappe Kodisilla. Of course, it doesn't um, talk about pandemic situation, but um, it is a, a protocol signed by, uh, was it Denmark and Sweden at the time, which allowed uh, uh, Sami to cross the newly born state border freely to exchange or family re relations or traditional livelihoods or so. So this Finnish uh, ruling, is, uh, it's only little part of uh, what was granted for us in 1751 already. <laughs> we, can, we can celebrate, but not so much. <laughs> <laughs> they just picked uh, one small portion of the, the 1751 thing. Oh man, okay. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. still in force, and uh, it's uh, in a way uh, uh, a guiding principle for my behavior. Like um, going back to what you said before, Gazali, that uh, self determination is a, a mindset in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, taking this Lappe as a as a guiding principle, which is that the state border does not exist for Sami. 
so it uh, to me it means that i don't really pay so much attention to to the restrictions um, let's say even before the pandemic times uh, Are you, we yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you, have you hear me now? Yeah, you're, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even like before pandemic times, like I didn't uh, pay so much attention, like uh, uh, how much are you allowed to bring this product across the border? And, and like there are some silly EU regulations that you're not allowed to bring berries across the border, but mm. I don't even stop to consider those. I just think they're silly. And yeah, if I'm stopped, then yeah, that will happen and it will have some consequences. But uh, I. Oh, no. Okay. I can continue where, where I was like. <laughs> Got lost. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but, but that's really yeah. He'll come back. That's really yeah. true. The the in in the daily life, the border doesn't mean that much. On on, on yeah on, in our lives, there are certain certain things you you cannot obviously state to be Sami culture and livelihoods. Yeah, like when if you buy a car or something, that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about our our needs as a society and and persons and our our free free roaming and, and use of the land yeah so, the go government is trying to silence me from speaking about <laughs> <Lapa Kodis. Yeah. laughs> I was kicked out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah cuz um cuz the sami are in a well, I want to say in a unique position because uh, there are many more Indian people that are living across borders. Um, look at the, the uh, in, um, in Chile, there's a lot of Indian people that are Indian people that live across borders um, with other countries. And was it yeah, Canada, US, no, Canada, US, Canada, Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mexico, yes. And there's, um, um, I was thinking Malaysia, there's uh, some more. Is it, um, do you get an? Like I would imagine, like uh, well, luckily, quote unquote, um, we're not living across borders. Then again, we do live across borders, but then we have two million on the islands, and then we have uh, fifty thousand on like halfway across the world. No, across the world. Um, that that these people, because I would imagine that there's some these people that are interested in like how you deal with things, and that they come visit you, and like, all right, how do you do things? Does it happen at all? That, that you're visited Does by other indigenous people. All? That, that indigenous peoples, like so for example, from Mexico, for, let's say the Yaki, the Yaki people, um, they have these peoples living in 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 the the U U.S. side as well as the uh, Mexico side. So their 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 lands, their indigenous lands, are are, are um, cut in half by the border between Mexico and the U.S. I would I would imagine that it, if you look around the world, there is the situation of the Sami is in most progressive way um, that they would come up, they would come in and already they would ask you or visit you guys. Uh, you guys, it's like, hey, how are you guys are doing it? Because we would like to do some something similar. Has that happened at all? You think? I I can. I, I haven't been in those kind of interactions, but mm. sure, it it it, uh, it seems natural that that people, indigenous peoples living on borders, have had talks about this. But but I haven't had those talks, yeah. so I don't know. But on the mm. other other hand, we also have one of the hardest borders to cross inside mm. Zapmi, and that's the, between Russia and and Finland yeah, and, and, and Norwegian side of. Uh, of of Sapmi. so that yeah. that border is like really strict again. So yeah. so it's not that we roam freely all over Sapmi like we wish to. Uh, yeah. So 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 we have to deal with many kinds of systems and border borders border uh, controls. Yeah, because not a lot of people know that is that there's also Sami. The Sami is divided by not much. a lot of people think that Sami uh, people are divided by three borders, but it's actually four. There's the Kola Peninsula as well. That, that 
There's yeah. also some living on that in that part. Is it? Um, yeah, that, that's, that's strange that people always always refer to Norway, Sweden, and Finland, um, but they never, at least, a lot of people make them make that. Well, that's not a mistake, but like they forget yeah, but, actually. It, it, it could be the reason for that could be that on Russian side there is no parliament and not, okay. not the Sami parliament. So the Russian yeah. society is is part of of Sami council by organization member organization. Yeah. So so but they don't have their own parliament at least yet. So A that could be one parliament. reason. A recognized parliament that is. So that could be one reason people yeah. assume that or or don't know about that part of Sami in some contexts yeah yeah and yeah i don't know about uh, this if people have come to learn about uh, sam in especially for the cross border situation but uh, uh, i've gotten some requests like uh, uh, other indigenous uh, people have wanted to come here uh, to learn in general about how how things are with the sami because uh, i would say it can at least seem quite uh, advanced when you look at it uh, like uh, we have the Sami parliament it sounds fancy so that's the uh, self-governing body so um, mm -hmm. so these kinds of requests uh, I've I've gotten not not the um, festival guru request that hasn't come in yet there, there, <laughs> there has been some of those as well <laughs> Yeah, it, but, is, is but that, obviously, yeah. Uh, when when you think about it, then then uh, we should have one parliament for all Samis, obviously. Mm. So so someday, I hope we'll get there, and and at least I am trying to work towards that goal, and many others also. But then we are like stuck with the government mm. by the current yeah, but, system, but, so it's uh, not that easy to break free to one common parliament, uh, one one parliament. Yeah, one step towards that, um, uh, at least um, in one way, um, like uh, joining, joining the Sami political discussion has been to to get um, a common uh, date for the elections. Uh, yeah. Now, now there are different Sami parliaments, and um, it was decided uh, just recently by the Finnish Sami parliament that um, yes, we want a common common date for the. For the Sami bar Parliament elections um, in uh, in the three Nordic countries, so yeah, I think we are only waiting for for the Parliament on Swedish side for to decide mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, but, uh, the the way to say that, and with my obviously limited knowledge of the Sami politics, uh, so so does it mean that uh, the for example the the Sami Parliamentary Council is that is that off the table? Is that not, ha not happening anymore? No, yeah, it's it, happening. It still exists. Yeah, it exists. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's clearly uh, like a joint body for the Sami parliament. It's not really um, an actual parliament. Yeah, it's it's not a parliament in itself. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's a collaborative body between the different Sami parliaments. Right, so right. I would say it has more of this. Um, like a principal uh, level authority, not so much uh, um, real authority, even if the Sami parliaments don't have all that much uh, uh, decision making power, but uh, the the parliamentarian council it has uh, even less. But of course, they are they're the highest level of uh, the official Sami representation. So in that sense, uh, um. They their voice is heard, but then it's not such a, a big institution, and even uh, there isn't even a secretariat. But it revolves okay. around different countries, so um, it's it's quite limited the the work that uh, that it does. So, okay. so it's uh, yeah, it's nothing near um, a a one Sami parliament. Yeah, and that's, but it's a really important body for coordination between the parliaments and to, to yeah. have some, some common, common uh, like, make some guidelines for our, ourselves so we are in sync, so to say. Okay. Mm. And, so and, it's and, a very and, important function. 
and th does it um, um, coordinate on, on on only a few issues or or, or almost every issue that, that that concerns some? I haven't seen the li latest meeting papers, but but uh, generally on issues that concern Sami as a people and, and yeah. concerns all, all Sami. Okay. And and one 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 point of collaboration or or paper that has been worked on really much it's it's the Sami Sami Mielanomma uh, Sami Julkastusas Nordic Sami Convention. Yeah. yeah. Explain that a little bit, the Nordic Sami Convention, um, if you can. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I was just... I was like, just took a but... very deep breath. <laughs> I was waiting if Pesco will jump into it, or should I? Oh, just yeah. jump on. Yeah, so it's... Um, it's this uh, attempt of uh, harmonizing the legislation in the three Nordic countries where Sami live... Uh, uh, regarding the Sami, because now we yeah, are um, like Finland, Norway, and Sweden, they have um, differing uh, uh, legislation regarding the Sami. So the Nordic Sami Convention aims at uh, being the the guiding document for these uh, three three states um, in their relations uh, with the Sami. And um, yeah, it has a wide range of. Um, or, yeah, there is only a draft. Uh, yeah, draft declaration, no convention, sorry, and uh, it um, it was um, declined by the Sami Parliament. So there, at the moment, is no text on the table. But anyway, there there have been two draft uh, conventions, uh, and the articles are quite wide ranging, uh, from um, from self determination to land rights to rights to edu education and healthcare and and so on. So yeah, they aim to put the Sami on the on the same line, so to speak, uh, in in the three Nordic countries. Right. And, and, and is that uh, something sort of convention between the the sorry, I keep keep saying like between the the three, uh, yeah, the Sami in, in the three countries, but it is actually for the entire Sami, obviously, and. So, which is also going to have an effect on, I would assume then, because it's one Sami convention, it would have an, uh, an effect on, and on the the countries, right? The the uh, Sweden, Norway, and, and Finland, and as in like, as in, would they be observers to it, or signatories to it? Like, how how should I, how should people see it? Um, yes, I understand it. The the countries would be the signatories to that, and. Uh, and the Sami actually would not be a party of that convention, but it would be a, a convention between the states about mm. the Sami. Right. But but all three parliaments have to agree. Yeah. 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 So 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 it has to be of the of the I will water. Yeah. So so like the, the first the, the the parliaments have to agree to the text first before it goes to the, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so in principle, everyone has to sign that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that that uh, is pra practice. It's still on the table right now. Is is uh, what you guys now are saying? <laughs> Not so much it, right it, now. It's in the bottom drawer of. <laughs> <laughs> it's in so someone's uh, archive somewhere. Yeah, yeah, well, the negotiations right. took uh, years and it was already the second uh, set of uh, negotiations or the preparation of a second uh, draft of the Nordic Sami Convention. And uh, yeah, this time it was um, uh, declined by the Sami Parliament. So then um, the states, I think uh, uh, Norway is not very willing to approach it um so they just say that no we have used enough time for this so we're we're done with it that's my my take on it for now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. understandable um but it's it's a good like yeah it's it's a good way of approaching things actually trying to um unify the the, the no, it's, here again here it is again like like um yeah, trying to come up with a uh, uh, with a convention that applies to all countries, and then that also signifies that 
the Sami are people that are now divided by, by, three, by four countries, right? Um, uh, so you you were talking about like you would see what, like to see a, like a like a full on parliament right so is is that uh, is that can you see it happening do you, do you see a pathway towards that right now definitely yeah and but uh, but it's a long path it seems sure uh, sure because, just... yeah uh, to to develop that system and yeah. obviously the the parliamentarian council is is like this forerunner for to to build that it's common, a step, common right, yeah. body it's a step yeah and yeah. unlike us that mentioned obviously we have to have uh, to to codify the elections now we have three di different election systems and different election dates even election years so we have to get those in line so we have to take this step by step but i definitely definitely see it sometime in the future and i think yeah. it's very much ne needed also Mm -hmm. Then, then we can then we can speak with with one voice to three countries, and and I think that will 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 make us much much stronger, and also we we save a lot of work when we can work together and not on three sort of islands all by of ourselves in yeah. some cases. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, when when we have these three systems also that we have to take into account, like three national bodies, then in that future. Uh, one parliament, then then we have to have like these wings that work in that system and in that system and in that system. Yeah. In in the three uh, and and hopefully also four countries in in time. Uh, mm. So so but but that I'm sure we are capable of of building that that parliament. We are. That, that it's it. There is not. I can't see any obstacle big enough to to make an argument to to not do it. Right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What what got you guys actually into politics? I guess all well, like... <laughs> yeah, for me it was a three-step process. Mm -hmm. Three-step process. Uh, I, yeah, I can I can okay. start with myself, and Aslat can start with himself. But I'll start. Okay. I was uh, I was not in politics at all uh, mm. until I was like this was in two thousand and twelve. Then that's when I got into to politics uh, in a, in any way. I refused to join any organization or or to even to even read news about about uh, politics in general, Norwegian's politics or Sami politics, whatever. I didn't care. Yeah. I tried to live my life as freely as a Sami as possible. So already from the from a yeah, very young age 13 14 years i have been this kind of activist to try to enforce or or to for, force uh, myself as a sami uh, regardless of which country i'm i'm in uh, but i refused to go to politics until the day i saw that the pres the president of uh, the parliament on norwegian side speak in a conference i was there in another capacity as a language worker in a in a language center and when i saw that that speech and that uh, aggression from the norwegian ministers uh, the minister said something like this if i translate it uh, there are only a few obstacles left then the the north is open and he meant development industry oil gas and so forth mm. and I, I i got like really angry and then asked for the floor right away. I wanted to address that. Okay, you are meaning us, we are the obstacles were and and try to, to confront him. But after that minister's statement with the small obstacles left, which I believe was us, then mm. the president of the Sami parliament was to take the floor or or speak. And I was like really okay. This is our president. I didn't know anything about Sami Parliament. Mm. I, I, I believe he will he will address the minister. But that yeah. speech was so toothless. Um. And and I I was so disappointed in, in our president that I, I I again asked for the floor and I thought I can do this better <laughs> than than our <laughs> president. And I was really, really angry of, of the whole situation, obviously. I didn't get the floor. Time ran ran out, and it was probably good because I was 
not very skilled in using words publicly <laughs> back then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I might have said some things that would not have been proper to say in, in, that, mm. in that context. That was step, step one. Step one, okay. Uh, yeah, and step two, then, then they tricked me into this organization. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> they they tricked you? One, yeah, one, one old teacher of me said, you have to come to this, this, this general assembly, this yearly meeting. Uh, I said, what assembly? Yeah, you have been chosen to the board of this, this uh, local Sami organization that is a member of Norwegian Sami Association. Mm. Uh, and I said, I, I have not agreed to this. I, I don't want to go to any, any organization. I refuse. Yeah, but you have been elected. You have to come here and clear that up. You can't do that by phone with me. And uh, okay, I, I thought, okay, let's let's do this and clear yeah. this mess up. I'm I'm yeah. not to be part of that. But uh, I I believe they had some plan with that to just trick me in because it was really interesting once I got there. Okay, this is uh, these are the kind of of things they do in this organization and. And I volunteered to be leader for the organization because it seemed really, really fun. Mm. And I didn't know what I signed up to. And step <laughs> three, of, <laughs> a few months after that, they, then they asked me to, to, if I would be willing to run for election for the Sami parliament. So it's mm. like this, 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 that process. So I, I believe they set me up. But yeah, uh, it has been it a, escalated. It's a, been a f- fun ride. It's a, been a fun ride. <laughs> It escalated into 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 being a politician. Yeah. All right, Aslat, try to top that. <laughs> what, you, what is your story? Uh, yeah, my story is that uh, um, I guess I just did not say no to some things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I was back in the day. I was in in I was studying in the Sami University College in Guadalajara, and and um, I hadn't been involved in any political or or civil society work prior to that. And I remember there was um, a call for all students to come to this like a general student meeting to to choose the student board and uh, student representatives to different uh, boards of the of the university college and um, when i got this invitation i thought that yeah i suppose everyone is going so let's go there uh, little did i know there were maybe 10 people or or might have been seven people in the in the meeting um, and as it happened that we had to nominate people to different positions then everybody who was there they were nominated to multiple uh, boards and I ended up being a, a vice chair of the student um, council or student board and um, yeah then we got the invitation to come to the um, uh nordic sami youth uh, conference or sami youth conference i guess it's called and um yeah then i i thought that yeah i might go as a representative of the student council and uh, once i got uh, got there and um, i would say that there is quite um, um need for active uh, sami participation in many fields so when when i went there and people realized that oh there is a person who who might be able to do something and who looks remotely interested in some of the things uh, discussed here then why not why not you uh, join also or you could be nominated to the to the youth council of the sami parliament and yeah, somebody asked me if I want to um, be nominated, and I was like, "Yeah, I mean, why not?" Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm I'm not sure of the exact um, um, in what um, or what happened before and what happened after, but also um, me joining the Finnish Sami Youth Organization, it was um, uh, one of the first steps. Um, so I. Uh, at that time, I was at the work practice in Anar, and I remember 
uh, my guy my namesake uh, wrote me and said that uh, there is are you coming to the annual meeting of the Finnish uh, Sami Youth Association the SSN guys that you guys really know yeah know well and um, then I thought that uh, uh, what what's the, what's the, what's this now SSN um, and then he explained it a little bit and I'm like yeah okay so party okay I'll be there <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, then uh, me and my cousin we we drove there the next day and on the way there in the car we joined as members of the organization so that we could join the uh, annual meeting and and yeah the same thing happened like they when the new board was being chosen then uh, there were not too many people like uh, eager to take this uh, this uh, responsibility so I happened to be one of those who did not say no, so I I, <laughs> I became a board member for the organization, and and I think that was uh, the same year or maybe year before uh, this New York trip that we ha- we discussed before in in this um, podcast. So, mm-hmm. so we had um, a very active board in the Finnish Sami Youth Association at that time, and and um, yeah, there were a lot of. Uh, Lot of common issues, and uh, we we were um, uh, yeah acting uh, and taking positions on on timely issues, and yeah, it seemed it seemed like there was a need for for doing doing that, and uh, yeah, then it's slowly the ball started rolling, and I ended up uh, uh, as a member of the Sami Parliament, and then uh, some years later, I ended up as the vice president of the Sami Council, and. Yeah, it's kind of when when you are ready to take a stand on some issues, and and then there are these positions um, uh, that need to be filled. Then uh, often it's uh, those people who who are present and who are kind of like, yeah, I I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess that was more more or less uh, my my story. I have one more detail. It's a go similar. for it. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I didn't know what I signed up to when when I agreed at last. I had a few months to think about joining the the elections to or run for election to the Sami Parliament in my area for for yeah. our 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 organization. Uh, and then it came the time to suddenly the time came to this election campaigning and I had no clue what I was doing but I had really great people backing me up so so that that was that was great and that, but then it came time for the first debate like public debate yeah and I haven't hadn't got to, around to read our program what we actually mean in the politics <laughs> So so I was so unprepared, and I see these other guys, the other organizations and parties in this this uh, debate. We gathered in this uh, this Valastalan sala, uh, this community hall. Yeah. yeah, and and I see they have programs with them, and I hadn't taken anything with me. I didn't even have a pen and a paper. I just like stumbled into this thing. Real yeah. unprepared, and but but the thing is, I had uh, met um, the first president of the Sami Parliament, uh, Ole Hendrik Manka, mm-hmm. on my on my uh, doorstep when I was going to the debate, and I he saw I was nervous like 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 hell, and he just said, "You just 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 uh, follow your feelings, just trust yourself." And I repeated that to myself all the drive to the debating place. Okay, yeah. trust in yourself, trust in yourself. And I couldn't convince myself, but I think that that made it a little bit easier at least. So yeah. what I ended up doing was to ask for a pen and a paper, and I wrote my own program and hoped that it was in line with the organization's program, just by but by gut feeling. And, yeah. and it, it got kind of a good debate because I opposed most of the other guys. Okay. Uh, and stated my own politics and just hope that this isn't way out of line of, of our actual politics. <laughs> and then I went home <laughs> and read the program uh, to just check, did I mess up big time now? But it turned out that I was spot on. 
with my own personal politics and the organization's politics. So, so then, then it, then it fe- felt really great to be at least like officially in the in the race. And I obviously have chosen the right platform to work politically from, since mm-hmm. since that paper was so in line with my own world world and political views. But it was a scary moment. You remember what the really program scary. was? Like you remember the, what, what? Oh, it's a long program. It's like twenty pages long. With the you issues. wrote twenty oh. pages? No, I just wrote bullet points for myself. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what? My, my beliefs on different topics that were lifted on the, yeah. on the, the in the debate. How, how I would take my take on those but it uh, happily it turned out to be be in line with the with the party with the organization <laughs> so that's, that's a good war story as an as like as the, <laughs> not a war story but like an origin story like how you got it uh, got into politics well i kind of stumbled into it like i uh, i tripped and fell into into politics um yeah. or got, not bribed but like, like um it escalated a little bit and it's, it's always, is it, is it, is it, it's something that I hear often though, um, that it is not something that you choose. It just, you, you, it's a choice after a, a choice has an effect. You make a choice has an effect and it's choice and it has an effect. And it's not like, I've, I've yet to see people, uh, think very clearly now, very, yeah. Like that, that are like, yeah, I really want to do this because I'm, um, yeah, I'm really going to start doing this because I'm going to project a uh, process of both as a politician, but also as, as just activism or and rights. It's just experience triggers something and then that it cause and effect, cause and effect. So mm. it's, al- it's always fun to hear those stories or fun, interesting to hear those stories. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's often so that uh, people find themselves in a position where you have to speak out. There is something that yeah. uh, somebody needs to say, and it just might happen to be you who have to say it. Yeah. And then when you open yeah. your mouth and there are people like, yeah, yeah, that's what the, we wanted you to say, then that's kind of when the ball starts rolling and who knows where you'll end up. <laughs> Yeah. So, so where will you end up, uh, Aslat? Well, what, what is, um, yeah, you, 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 your vice, what was the vice chair of the summit council now? Yeah, yeah, and, and member of parliament of the the summit parliament in Finland. So I've achieved it, so I can retire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like there's there's. Um, well, yeah, you can also always be president of the the Sami Council and, and president of the Sami Parliament. Is that something that you can do both, by the way? Um, not at the same time. No. Not sure. Really. Yeah. 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 Oh, but, that would be impossible. Yeah. yeah. Too much work. Yeah, I actually I'm quite comfortable being in the vice something position because. Um, yeah, it allows me to take uh, take the stage every now and then, and uh, yeah, share my views and, uh, and debate and participate in many different processes. And but then again, I don't have all the responsibilities of a president. Yeah, you don't you don't take the heat. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. take so much heat. Mm. So yeah, I I don't know. Um, yeah, I decided to not uh, not run uh, to to the Sami Parliament. I wanted at least to have a break from that. I don't know how long that break will be, but yeah, I have this sense that uh, there will not be any major uh, steps with Sami rights in Finland uh, in the coming future. So I think uh, whenever uh, ah. if I if I decide to join again, then I haven't missed out on many things it will be just picking up where where i left right so you so you're doing a smart thing you, you you're looking at it very strategically you know like are you picking your battles all right so for the next foreseen years you don't see anything uh, significant happening no not really i mean if you look at the where the debate is in general mm-hmm. in, in 
in Finland. Like, um, I would say that uh, now, just in the past few weeks, it has been quite uh, significant um, uh, mm. for the Finnish um, Sami discussion because there have been some, some, I would say, big um, events or publications that uh, have been contributing to the discussion of um, colonization because um, the Finnish uh, debate is on the level that um, um, most people uh, don't uh, agree or know that there ever has been colonization practiced by Finland. So you'll have to start the debate from arguing that yeah, there actually has been and is a colonial present in Finland, uh, which was uh, uh, which came after colonial uh, past so that's yeah. where we are now and i think uh, yeah there have been some uh, things that have been uh, contributing and getting uh, i would say quite a lot of attention on the national level so for example uh, there was just a released um, um like a f- feature length uh, documentary about uh, sami colonization in finland mm-hmm. um and um yeah, I would say that got quite a lot of attention, and uh, and um, yeah, a lot of people were uh, responding to that. That oh, there were so many things I didn't know, and this opened my eyes. And and um, yeah, I think these kind of uh, things they slowly contribute to um, building up some kind of base for um, for the general public uh, to understand. Uh, uh, that there is uh, an issue with the Sami rights in Finland. So I would say that some um, some steps have been taken taken in the past, uh, um, and uh, yeah, also my cousin just published a a novel that uh, he wrote in Finnish, um, which is written from the perspective of a Finnish man who comes to to zap me and. Uh, who learns uh, the Sami situation in in the course of the book, and and that has gotten a lot of uh, publicism, and I think um, um, yeah, these kinds of uh, um, publications and events they create this uh, discussion. So at least uh, I think it's um, becoming known that uh, there are Sami in Finland and that they have some rights which are not uh, recognized and respected so we are in the very early stages of of this uh, these discussions uh, um but um yeah at least um, i think um, we are building on something but i i don't think any changes will happen anytime soon but um, yeah slowly slowly like somebody yeah, sure. Somebody advised me in my early years in uh, um, politics, Sami politics, was that um, yeah, if you want to go far, then you will not go by running; that you will you will walk. So mm. yeah, you will have to have this perspective of uh, twenty years and so on. So we're not uh, we're not trying to rush to the goal, but uh, trying to maintain some kind of vision of what uh, what might be. Uh, ahead or where we are trying to steer this uh, this boat so to say and yeah, yeah. Slowly work towards that goal yeah like people need to have like, I think people need to be and very aware that um, decolonization is something um, that you need to be you need to be very patient uh, you need to have a plan uh, but the, the patience is, is very important because um, you want to create something that that is um, long lasting and to be able to do that you know you need to, you need to work yeah you know, like you said you know it takes like baby steps because um, if you do if you do if things too, too fast uh, it is it'll probably um, you know collapse very soon so you have to, so you, yeah that's why I always say to people that um, um, authentic takes time. The authenticity takes time, um, so you need to be uh, to do as as much as humanly possible. But like it is also uh, to um, yeah be very patient or know being able to deploy patience actually to that um, things will develop 
over time. It, it will take a very long time to, to do to do to decolonize, for example. With yeah, it, and you yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like you said earlier that this is an ever ongoing process, yeah. and and it's a work every every day, and and you have to also work on so many levels mm -hmm. all the time. You and and obviously you have to start with yourself and and build that foundation, and I actually believe believe that self determination is is something to really fight for and and. It, it's. I believe you have talked about this before, but it's. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a, a life cycle to to just think about it and and work on it, twenty four seven. And and that what that's really what it takes. But it's obviously exhausting. And like yeah. Aslat Aslat also said, this 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 these processes they take so much time that you have to be patient, or else you will just. <laughs> then just run into the wall, yeah. and uh, and uh, yeah, I also had the break from from Sami Parliament just for for that because I realized that this this uh, level of working I can't maintain for for twenty years. So it's better mm. to take a break earlier than to 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 not yeah to hit that wall yeah very hard. to burn out yeah 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 and and mm. that that it's something I see in in. Yeah, among everyone, that that it's so much work really? that has to be done, and and so little people to do that work, mm -hmm. uh, and and many people feel that uh, that they have to contribute, and and they do, they really yeah. do, but it's uh, it's it's exhausting. So so our line of work, I, I think, we everyone who wants to contribute, there is always some work to do. That's like this proposal whoever is listening if you want to do something and, and and help out then there's definitely work to do and 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 i think <coughs> any effort would would be very appreciated by by the frontliners if i put it that way yeah yeah hmm. is it is there and this is just um so it surprised me actually oh, not surprised me What, what from what I'm seeing, what I've seen, like people from the likes of John Henriksen and Ali Kaskatawa, like and and before that, uh, the president Eagle Oli, like these people that a lot of Indian people look up to, and and only looking at at the, at the international level, right? Um, that um, before, for many years. You saw like when and um, the Sami delegation was like in the like forty people. Like there's a lot of people coming going to New York, but it's getting less and less and less. Um, has that something to do with that? Um, like stamina, like, like um, what you're talking about that you get tired. Is that something that, has, has that something to do with it that you see? Because right now there's just not a lot. Uh, you, you don't see that much Sami anymore at compared to years ago. I think it's a, or I believe or hope it is a more. It's not an issue about stamina and people mm. too tired to go to New York, but uh, yeah. it's efficiency that not everyone right. has to go to New, New York. And and mm -hmm. when we have the amount of work we have back home. Then, then, uh, then, yeah, it's like smarter working. I yeah, 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 it's yeah. It's the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, last time we were in New York uh, in 2019, then there was a huge Sami participation in permanent forum. I think uh, I, I don't remember what was. Uh, uh, it was the yeah International Year of Indigenous Languages, so that mm. brought a lot of Sami there yeah. with the language technology group and and so on. But uh, yeah, that year there was a uh, a lot of Sami there. So I actually I was thinking that uh, it's um, yeah it's maybe too much. Like we should be more efficient with this, and it's not necessary to send all these people to this meeting. Like uh, these issues could be covered by less people. 
So I think um, yeah, there still is room for for being more efficient and yeah, and I think um, yeah, that comes back to what we were discussing before on this um, one Sami Parliament thing is that uh, yeah, we are often working at um, at um, many levels or we're, we're, let's say we're doing the same work in different places, mm. so we're like repeating the same things and. Like um, yeah, reinventing the wheel again and again, and I think we could uh, use some some of our human resources uh, and other resources as well in a, in a more efficient way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and again, the state borders are a really big obstacle in in that matter to yeah. to, to really really coordinate the coordinate the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought, I thought, well, thank you so much for, for clarifying that because it's just an observation and uh, it's um, instead of like living in your own head, you know, like creating these all assumptions, better to ask that question and then, then um, yeah, let, let people, smart smart people like you uh, guys, yeah, um, yeah, answer that. Um, so that's super, very much uh, appreciated for, for that. Um, is there anything that we have not talked about that? You still want to? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> In two and a half hours, we, we yeah. just get to briefly talk about anything. So yeah. <laughs> guarantee that many issues we haven't touched. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, um, uh, we, yeah, we, we briefly talked, well, like from time to time, we talk about self determination and, de and, and, and decolonization like, throughout the whole thing, but like never got in depth to it. This is this, this what what I feel. Um, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just an observation. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, I, I try to reflect a little bit upon this format that we are doing now and what we usually do. And and uh, okay. I have to say, it, it this conversation, it would have been a totally different. Not that this is bad or anything, but mm -hmm. it would have been a totally different conversation if you were with us by a fireplace up here, uh, yeah, and and then then the conversation obviously had to take a totally different turn. So that that my proposal is the first thing you do when the world opens up, you come up here, and then we make that episode also. To, yeah, to let's, let's do that and, uh, to so, continue the con conversation and see where it goes then. So this is like a warm up, you know, like like the introduction. Yeah, a teaser. A teaser, <laughs> two and a half hour teaser. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to uh, to a, a um a more in depth conversation about yeah whatever, and, and yeah definitely it's um so so how should I how should I travel because because um should I uh, go through Helsinki or go to so Oslo to get to you to you guys? Well, what whatever is, the best is cheapest to come up to <laughs> to our valley. I, I I made one almost one mistake. My I think it was the first time I ever went to uh. uh to Sami, I think it was, yeah, and I was going to Alta. I had a plane ticket to go to Alta. So um, obviously my first point, so I went to Oslo first and then I had to change flights to go to, 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 go to Alta. So um, first time ever, and I was, and I think this also contributed to, to my confusion was I was sitting like in, the front row seat, like the, all, all the way, all the way up front. Um, so, so how long is the flight from 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 Oslo to? to no, it's not. It doesn't go directly to to uh, to Alta. It goes to Tromsø, Tromsø. first. Probably yeah. Tromsø first. Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple of hours flight. Yeah, I didn't know that because my ticket said uh, Oslo to Alta. It didn't say Tromsø in the in the middle. Okay. So. Yeah. It said I think like like uh, um like three hours something like like so I googled it and said yeah from, from Oslo to Alta is like three or four hours I don't know, I can't remember anyway so at some point um, half asleep um, the air, uh, the captain was uh, thinking like all right well we're preparing for landing and everything else so I thought I'm in Alta right now so I got off the plane. And and just walked like 
nothing is happening. Like, all right, because uh, I've never been to Trump, so I've never been to Alta. So I was like, yeah, it, it's okay. So I'll, I just walk, do my regular thing, get to get to check out. So I was walking through the whole thing, and there was not one sign that said you're in Tromso. Not, didn't say any at all. So I just kept, I kept yeah. on walking, only until I was at the conveyor belt of the, of the I was waiting for my luggage, and I remember that uh, I googled it because I was I'm, I'm an aviation geek. I love flying, and I I, I I'm I. I, I not obsessed, but I do a lot of research about what airplane I'm going, uh, I'm flying, and also like the airport that I am um, arriving at, because I would like to figure out if there's if there's a layover and I, what should I do. And I googled it, Alta Airport. It's a tiny airport. Only at the conveyor belt, when I was waiting for my luggage, I was, I realized that. Well, hold on. Alta is a small airport, and it was pretty big. Like, in terms of airport, is pretty big compared to Alta, obviously. So I was just waiting there, and the people were obviously also also waiting. So it took me, like, I don't know, like five minutes to make, it, to make a choice. Either ask someone else that was waiting for the luggage to, like, all right, um, where am I? <laughs> it's cause, and, and running the risk of being like sound like stupid because like what do you mean where am I or go outside and just or, or, yeah not, not go outside but just ask one of these um, custom agents luckily after the fact and right before I was just yeah and this is where insecurity comes in because um, I was like what to do so one of these so the baggage came in so at the the luggage said instead of it was ALT, it was TOS. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, hold on. I'm not where I'm, I don't think that I'm. Sh so I, for a second, I thought <laughs> I got on the wrong plane. <laughs> that I was. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was like, like, I was on, a, on the wrong plane. But no, and, and nobody checked. Like, I said, like, the only point of reference that I had was the gates. So I was like, like retracing my steps. I'm like, oh, maybe I got on the, the wrong gate, 35A instead of 35B, whatever. Maybe that was a mistake because nobody checked. Because I was panicking. Like, there was this <laughs> slight panic in, in, my, in everything that I did. So I was, um, uh, so I saw that label. So I, I walked up to this custom agent and I thought, excuse me, sir, just by coincidence, like like um and and just um out of curiosity, is this Alta? <laughs> and the, the the gentleman looked at me like, "What are you talking about? No, 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 this is Tromso." So I'm like, "Oh, okay," and I assumed that I got on the wrong plane. So like, well, I think I got on the wrong plane because I had to go to Alta. So that 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 custom thing had this. Uh, awareness of knowledge and knowledge of time and, and place that he said, oh, um, yeah, but there's one plane outside that is going to Alta right now. It's like, what do you mean going to Alta? So he said, oh, so one lady, or oh, elderly lady, I, I remember this as a day like it was yesterday. She passed by, she, by coincidence, she heard, overheard our conversation and she said, yeah, you should have stayed on the plane. Because that's what they said. Tromso, everyone that is going to Tromso, get off. Everyone is going to Alta, stay on a plane. But I didn't never got got the message because it was all uh, another in passenger. Region. Another passenger. Told another, me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Another passenger. So I just ran like really hard, all, like tried to run all the way back to um, um, to, to the airplane. Um, luckily, this 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 customs agent ran with me because at some point you cannot go back. You can go only yeah. there's only one way. So he ran, he opened doors and whatever. And I remember like they were about to close the door of the airplane that I was like, <laughs> hold on, sorry. So, and that guy was yelling something in Norwegian. So the, the, this, the gentleman opened the door again. And I'll never forget the looks on people, the look on people's faces when I walked in. And like, luckily I didn't have to like, go all the way to the back, I always had to do the, like, the walk of shame. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I, like, 
go back to my 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 seat again and just sat there and I'm like, oh yeah, all right, I'm not gonna say anything. So this guy come up come up to me like, um, did you by any chance think that uh, did you did you think did you thought that that we were in Alta? I said yes. Yeah, um, this is not Alta. Yeah, well, but you don't have to tell me that because. I just went through like seven stages of anxiety and 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 and, and, and <laughs> panic, um, just to find just to find that out. So that's why I'm asking, which route should I take? Uh, mm -hmm. because okay. <laughs> um, to to, okay. to get to, to you guys. I think yeah. safest yeah. for you, you from, is, from... <laughs> safest for you is bicycle. <laughs> and you just go, you just go north. And just, at some point just, you just will go that it. way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, nev we'll never make that mistake again. And <laughs> um, but like, yeah, it is. Yeah, I have the same. It's it's not the stress. I fell asleep in a small plane down in south southwest Norway, and there is like this many many small airports, and they just jump between them. And I fell asleep, and then I woke up when they landed, and sleepy eyes, and then I went inside, and I saw that, okay, this was maybe the wrong airport. I haven't <laughs> been there. So I asked them, I, this, this can't be the, I don't remember which airport I was going to. But mm. No, it's not. And the plane had already left, and it was oh. on the taxi. Yeah, but they just called them on the radio. Hey, this guy, he, he, he jumped off on the wrong airport. So mm. they turned around and got me, and then we flew. They got you? <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Okay. This, is, this is before 9-11 and, and all the security oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and things. And obviously a small propel plane. But I didn't get stressed. It was an adventure then, and I oh. believe it would be an adventure again. I have so many stressful moments when, when flying. Um, what well, not stressful, but like these situations, you're like, no, no, this is not happening to me. I was um, flying back from, I was went to Cunayala, uh, so in Panama. And to get to Cunayala, you have to like, this, either you can go by boat, which is challenging, or by airplane, which is a small propeller airplane. So um, on the way back, got into this airplane, and so I was sitting right next to the door. Say so that this, this put in the luggage, and so, and it's a small, it's a tiny island. Which and which is a tiny landing strip, which you use as an airport, um, which is kind of um, uh, nice to like to to, to see that that they're, what they're trying to make with 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 um, that they're trying to make an airport out of it with a gate and everything else. Um, anyway, so going back, small airplane, and it started like he started this 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 motor, and they were still loading on uh, loading in the luggage, and then. These people walked away. There's cool people there that, that they done their work and then walked away. Um, so the pilot started taxiing towards before takeoff. And still in my mind, because I was sitting right, right next to the door, I was like, at some point, they will close the door. And so he started taxiing to the runway. Still, they didn't close the door. So I was like, "All right, um, maybe, <laughs> maybe right before, or or um, they do it automatically. There's something. Only until it was like he was really like trying to speed up, you know, because there was a small strip. He was training, uh, trying to, uh, uh, yeah, speed up this motor. I'm like, holy shit, the door is still open. Then they, they, they don't even know that it's still open yet. So I was like, and I know twelve languages. Spanish is not one of them." So I was like, uh, "Senor, Senor," uh, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know what pilot was in 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 in, in Spanish. So the so like, captain, cap, uh, capitán. I don't know what I what I yelled. People thought I was crazy because uh, it's a guy that's, that's never flown in his life. Um, <laughs> only up to, up to up to the point that they turned around. So then I was pointing like to the door. That was there was no door. There was it was still open. So everyone was like, oh, no, no. And then the the guys, like, because he had, like, this throttle. He had to do overhead. So, like, they, 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 they throttled the, throttle the whole thing. And it's just, like, like nothing happened. Like, it's a, the, the, the most normal thing in the world. 
they just like got up out of the they the got out of his chair, closed the door, and just went back. Not even like, oops. <laughs> but I, I was like, it was the, not that. It was like it was <laughs> the normal, most normal thing in the world to like um, right before you take off that you just oh yeah. By the way, I have to close the door in the back. Um, so that is like those those those, those situations that makes you like yeah. You, you, the, like when when I tell people these stories of flying, people are like, yeah, you just made it up. It is not like it, it is. Some of these stories that uh, it happens in 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 Mexico, in New York, or whatever. Like it is the craziest story that that I always end up in. That um, in retrospect are funny, or are, are as funny as hell. To talk about Alta, there was I was to Mexico to Mexico. At a meeting in Mexico, so um, flew to Mexico City, and um, and I was supposed to be picked up, or but no one was pick, picking me up. I I didn't know any Spanish back then. I still don't know any Spanish. Um, so I was freaking out because it was midnight, and the last place you want to be at night, all by yourself not having a hotel, whatever, it's Mexico City. It's one of the most dangerous cities in the world. So I was like freaking out because I was supposed to continue on to Oaxaca and some, some someplace else. And I kid you not, I kid you not. I was slightly, that was, that was seriously 100% panic, panic situation. Hmm. So I grabbed my laptop and my phone, trying to call whoever was inviting me because uh, it was for the, the, the the um, the summit of uh, the, the communication of Abya Yala, so of the, of the Americas. So, looking for phone phone numbers, couldn't find it. So I was freaking out. Like it's midnight, past midnight, and I'm in Mexico City, not knowing where I am, and I don't know any Spanish. And I was, I remember, I was sitting at this chair with my laptop, trying to find a phone number. And in behind me, someone said the legendary word, Alta. And like, uh -huh. like, what? So I turned around, hey, Alta, Alta. We met in Alta at the, at the uh, Alta meeting in 2013. This lady was going to the same meeting and uh, uh, um, recognized me from the Alta meeting that, um, in 2013. And it was like only 2014. So I was like, oh, I, have, I have someone that like that knows Spanish. She she didn't know any English. She um, so we communicated with hands and feet and trying to m make sense of all this because she was also stranded in Mexico City, and that was oh man that, that that point in time that was the longest thirty minutes of my oh, that hour and an hour and a half of my life because you you just don't know if you're like all right I'm stranded. I'm supposed to fly, so I was supposed to be in Mexico, Mexico for a, a week and a half, but then continue to New York. So uh, f f for a meeting, so um, yeah, either change my flights uh, and then rearrange everything. But like the most packing thing was being in Mexico City, not knowing any Spanish, young, and uh, yeah, and at midnight not knowing what to do. So. Oh yeah, those are those are. Um, <laughs> I, I I should I could entire like an entire podcast series like an entire on on ex experiences um, while while flying, but yeah, she said when she said Alta Alta, um, yeah. that was like oh, someone like a safe yeah, word. Say it's a safety word. Yes, a safe word. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh that was, that was yeah, I don't know. I just, oh, wanted, okay. I just wanted to share that. I can be here three more minutes. Yeah, no, it's um, you guys. Thank you so much for being on a podcast. Uh, really, really, uh, it was a like a short notice kind of thing, but I really loved um, having the two of you. Definitely, uh, as soon as we open up, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll make sure I'll get, I'll get to um, I'll get to Sami Land, and then um, I'll I'll stay for a couple of days actually, not not just for just for the podcast episode, obviously, but. <laughs> I'll just uh, <laughs> just, just yeah. go for, go with bicycle, go go and yeah, do a fireside. And then bicycle back. A bicycle back. Um, yeah, I'll, but I'll... I 
I, I get to, I can, I can take a few minutes extra. I want to tell about Asa oh. also one, one very terrifying flight, flight uh, <laughs> story. Okay. It was when the time we went to Standing Rock, and I was uh, really ner- nervous, yeah, nervous yeah. back then because you had been in some meeting in Mexico, and uh, yeah. we tried, we tried to find tickets from Mexico to uh, where did we fly? To Minneapolis. Yeah, mini- you know, uh, yeah Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah, that was clo- the closest big airport to Standing Rock, but the tickets were so, so expensive. So Aslat, he went from Mexico to Oslo and slept a few hours at the airport, waited for us and got on the same plane as we did and went back to USA. So mm-hmm. I was like really nervous. Here is a guy uh, coming from Mexico, just dropping off some stuff in, in Oslo and going back to US. What will the customs think of this? Mm-hmm. That is he some, some kind of smuggler or something that? Yeah. travels around the world with with illegal stuff so but Aslat he's very calm always so he I don't believe he was any nervous at all but I was nervous mm-hmm. like very close trying to listen what the custom agent said when we landed in Minneapolis what he said to Aslat and how he should explain this and uh, yeah you have I see you come from Mexico I customs agents say and I think oh no here we go now it's full full stop <laughs> yeah and went to Oslo and now you are here how is that yeah and I asked explain yeah it was a meeting and the tickets were kind of uh, this was the cheapest way and I said okay and I was expect expecting okay mister you come with us mm-hmm. but the custom agent he take it, this stamping machine and said oh you must be really tired so you should go get some sleep. And then he stamped. It. And that moment, I was so relieved. I, I haven't been so relieved in, in my life many times. But Aslat, I think with his calmness in those situations, he would be a really great traveling mate for you. So you, when you panic, Aslat, you <laughs> Yeah. We should be travel buddies, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes whenever... panicking is good. It might get you on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, now I have All to right, guys. go. Can... Yeah, no, guys, thank you so much for your time, and I'll uh, see you guys at the um, uh, uh, yeah. Well, once once we open up for the um, the follow up podcast, and we'll talk about Standing Rock and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, this was fun. Thank it you was for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. There was yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you, guys, early. All right, now you guys welcome, man. Thank you guys for everything. All right, All right have a good you. one. Yeah, you too. See you. Yeah, see you. See you. Bye.